Seven Sport, the football specialists are proud to present the 1985 Army Reserve Cup Grand Final between Carlton and Hawthorne. Good morning everyone and welcome to the MCG, the Army Reserve Cup Grand Final by the two sides that have dominated the competition throughout the year, Hawthorne and Carlton. Carlton finishing minor premiers, Hawthorne number two spot. Joining me in the commentary position today, former Hawks champion Don Scott and former Collingwood sharpshooter Peter McKenna. Gentlemen, welcome. Yes, good afternoon, Sam or morning, Sandy, and uh, what a wonderful day this is. It's two days in Melbourne, isn't there, Peter? Melbourne Cup yes, day and grand uh, final good, day. Good morning to you, Don and Sandy, and uh, there's the Carlton side coming out in the ground, and I think they'd be hot favourites. I think you'd agree with that, Don, but. Uh, well, Hawthorne uh, inflicted one of their few defeats on this Carlton combination. Now, the interesting thing will be... No, he's not out there. I just uh, thought that Bruce Duell might even take his place in the side today, but he's not. This is where the interest will lie. Who is lining up for Hawthorne as their banner reads, let's start the ball rolling, going for the double today. But the big question is, who is going to be out there for the Hawks? And who is going to be playing in the seniors? Well, Knights is there, uh, Sandy, so obviously he is not going to take his place in the senior side. Some may consider that a bit of a surprise. No, I don't think no, it I is. I know so. you don't, but I think some Hawthorne fans may. Yes, I think that... Uh, I'm just trying to pick up... Uh, Michael yes, Byrne is, is out there. Michael Byrne is also uh, out there. And Gary Bacanara. Yes, I think that was pretty predictable. I don't think there was any way that Rodney Ede would not be selected in that senior side. And I think there was a, uh, Michael Tuck was another one, in my opinion, was a certainty. I really don't believe that Peter Knights has been 100% fit during this final se series. Well, that means it's that O'Halloran would be in too, Peter, in the senior side. We haven't seen him out there. Uh, well, well, that's we an interesting uh, one. O'Halloran up. Because he has played extremely well in the final series. and uh, I don't think he's played a senior game this year, has well, he? Well, he hasn't. Uh, his games at Hawthorne, as far as a senior player, were very limited. And, uh, in fact, you said none. I, I would agree with you. But he doesn't look like he's taking his place there. And he is usually captain of the reserve grade side. Right, gentlemen. Well, they're going to clear the field. We might clear some commitments and be back with you for the start of this grand final in just a moment. And here's the siren to start the game, the Army Reserve Cup Grand Final. And we've also noticed for Hawthorne, Rocket Rodney Ede is out on the ground. So it would mean that David O'Halloran and Michael Tuck will be starting in the 20, Peter he, McKenna. He's the stiffest bloke of all time, Rodney Ede, to not be in that senior side because he played a very, very good game last week. As we see the ball going up to Bacanara, over the back is Curly Austin. Bit of experience in those two names as we see there's English on the left foot, bring it towards the half-back line, over the head of Mark Koo it goes. So on that half-forward line, right in front of the Melbourne members stand, as players pounce in on top of the ball. David Howlett is the umpire with Peter Carey today, and it's David Howlett will bounce it. Let's get the view of a former Hawthorne champion himself on the, that selection, Don Scott, David O'Halloran and Michael Tuck. Well, O'Halloran can only play up back. Uh, Tuck, well, he can play anywhere, but I think it just leaves Hawthorne a little bit underdone as far as height on the forward line. I would have gone for Knights, although he didn't play well, just for a little bit of height, and that's I, the difference between the sides. Well, I think uh, they've probably played O'Halloran because of the strength of that Essendon forward line and the tall timber, Vanderhaar and Merritt and all them, and at least O'Halloran does play pretty close and puts pressure on, and I think that's probably why he's been played. There's Sullivan getting it out to Whitman. Chris Whitman onto the left foot, brings it back towards the pocket. Was that in the back? No, said the umpire. Peter Knights couldn't get to it. Now, here's James Bennett. Over to Bacanara. Bacanara on the right foot. Hooks it back, but puts it through for the first score of the game behind to Hawthorne. I notice they've got black armbands on. Have you got any idea what they're for? No, well, Peter Donigan's going to be joining us down on the uh, boundary line. I'm sure that uh, we'll be able to receive the information from him throughout the day. But let's get back to the business here in the Army Reserve Cup. And Curly Austin to bring the ball back into play for the Blues. Hartney up before acceptances. Good to see Big Wow Jones back in the side. That was Perovic went down with Hartney. Gagan sees it over the line and another throw in. 
Well, it'll be difficult for Rodney Ede to really gear himself up. He'd be a very disappointed boy to be out of that senior You're side. Surprised because, at that oh, very surprised. He was a very good. He got votes from a lot of people last week uh, against Footscray, as a matter of fact. And uh, well, I think it's a surprise. I thought he was a certainty to be on the bench, but still. They've got the tough job, the Hawthorne selectors and the Essendon selectors, and uh, they have to come to decisions. And every year in finals, you get disappointed players. Yep, here's the throw in once again. Deer trying to push it over the back. Robertson claimed. Gagan a hurried kick up towards the wing. Millen Hanna at the back tries to tap it over. An opportunity for Hawthorne went bagging through. Robertson couldn't take it. Pushed forward by Winton. Out wide towards the wing, flint off under pressure and taken over the line by Scott Howe. So another throw in to take place. As Peter and Jack mentioned in the under 19s, very good conditions here at the MCG. If you're making your way down, I'd probably be inclined to uh, put a jumper and coat in the bag. I doubt whether we'd get any rain, but who knows? It's cool, it's overcast, but great for football as Joe. Carlton's first attack down towards the half forward line. Fisted over the top by Ede, waiting down Malaxos, couldn't take it, picked up by Marcazani, gets ripped off the football and dropped it and lost it. Good umpiring as Glenn Howard did. He's got the big job down there on Warren Ralph today with uh, David O'Halloran obviously playing in the senior side as we see Howard bring it towards centre wing. James Bennett drops what he should have taken. It's in the centre area. Considine grabs it. We, I'm really looking forward to a terrific game between these two sides. Austin is playing on uh, Peter Knights today. There's a Bacchanara. He'll be a danger. Now, what was young? The umpire's paying advantage here as it's brought uh, right up there towards the half-back line by Peter Kenny. It's grabbed by Bennett. James Bennett towards half forward. As you would uh, imagine in a uh, final game, a lot of scrambly play at the moment. There's Bacanara, nearly hooked it in. Now it's Malaxos. Curran, short pass to Knights. And Peter Knights is right out at centre half forward. He's discarded that long sleeve Guernsey that he has been wearing the last couple of weeks now. Probably too far out to score a goal, but should be able to put it up in the goal square as he goes for the top. Doesn't quite get onto it. Nearly a mark to Hawthorne. Taken by Marku. Kicked off the ground there by Bacanara. Players charging after it. I think you'd agree, Don, a scrambly passage you've played so far. It's a typical grand final start, Peter, and uh, players on both sides are making mistakes, and that's real pressure football. And this is really good football at the moment. Once again, Don Scott presenting the $100 to the player he considers the best on the ground. The hurried kick for Carlton came from Peter Kenny. There's a long shot in towards goal. I think it's the first one of the day. It is to the Hawks, Chris Whitman, and they're on the scoreboard. The Hawks holding a seven-point lead after the centre bounce, a scrimmage, still basically in the middle, and so another ball up. Well, Peter McKenna has covered himself in glory as far as selection goes in recent weeks. Pete, who are you tipping? Well, it's... Uh... I, th I think you'd have to tip Carlton, but gee, Hawthorne, <laughs> they've started off all right. They look pretty fair to come early in the game. They're both two very good sides, but I, I think I'll pick Carlton. As well. Don? Hawthorne. Well, the Hawks going into their half-forward line once again. Wow Jones picks it up, but the whistle has sounded, and the free kick will go the way of Hawthorne. So here's another opportunity for them to go down towards full forward through David Sullivan. There's the kick. Bacanara got up high. But uh, used his opposition as a stepladder, and the free kick will go the way of Kenny. How do you have taken that, Mark? I wonder whether the umpire would have deemed it a free kick. It's, it's uh, an interesting one, those. Nevertheless, English gets a hurried kick out towards the right half forward flank. Coming to meet it is Ralph, under plenty of pressure from Big Abbott. Close to the boundary line, going to be kept in play and socket off the ground by Frank Marcazzani. Close to the boundary line, and uh, Jamie Morris, he decides, right, let's head for the boundary line. Well, this will be interesting, of course, have the footballers sprint at uh, half-time in the main game today, and uh, interesting to see if Marcus Arne competes in that. Uh, his name was in the papers. We see Warren Ralph going for that mark. He's been paid, and the ex-West Australian uh, full forward will take this kick right out towards centre wing. But Marcus Arne is named as Carlton's rep in the half-time sprint. So he's got to play a game and then go in that 100-metre sprint at half-time of the grand final. There's Howard bringing it out of defence towards centre wing. Over the shoulder, I think it was to Curran. Let's see, that. yes, Good it is Peter Curran. Curran played in the grand final side last year for Hawthorne. As he brings it out wide to Bacanara. 
Oh, geez, moving well early. Uh, Bacanari hooks it back. Peter Knights, out he comes, drops. Curran. Curly Austin's in there. Austin. Oh, there's a free kick going to Carlton's way over the neck. And I think that's Peter Kenny getting up. He's uh, had a couple of good finals games. Ricky Nixon, Pete. Sorry, Ricky Nixon, number 48. Kenny, of course, is number 40. Towards centre wing. An attempted mark there was by Millam Hanna. Still on that centre wing area as Hanna on the left foot gets a hurry kick. Bennett was grabbed, I feel, yes, by Des English and up by Howlett. Right onto that one. And James Bennett takes us on centre wing. So we're in the ninth minute of this grand final. An opportunity for the Rocket. Here goes Ede. A pass up towards Buccanara again, covering plenty of ground. Back to Ede. He's on the left foot. Hooks it deep in towards full forward. Austin's there on the last line of defence. Should have taken the mark. Didn't. And spilled over for one behind. And there must be a big question mark over a number of players. Their futures out in the ground. Curly Austin would certainly be one. I'd be very surprised if he played next year. Peter Knights, there must be some uh, question mark there. And apparently there's a question mark about uh, Gary Bacanara, whether he'll settle up again. Now, here's Muller. Ian Muller, who uh, Carlton have a very high opinion of. He brings it up towards half forward, Scott Howe, but it was in the back before that to Warren Ralph. Uh, there would probably be no better kick for goal in league football than Warren Ralph, but this will test his kicking ability. He's a long, long way out from goal. Now, he is a great kick. You make a liar if you put well, Put this out and bounce on the floor. Let's have a look at this uh, kick. He is a great kick of a football. There's the drop punt. Doesn't quite get onto it. Lands it up near the goal square. Up they go. Touched off the hands and over the line. Scoreboard showing one goal, two. Hawthorne, Carlton yet to score. And we've played just over nine and a half minutes of this first term. It's a sellout this day at the MCG and the crowd already building up well because it's a chance for the Hawks to get off to a great day on a very positive note. If you go back 12 months ago, Sandy, there was an all-in brawl at this stage at the nine-minute mark between Melbourne and Carlton. Here's the ball up once again, a chance. Good tackle. Picking it up was Shine. A hurried kick going out in Trace of goal picked up by Gagan into the square. I think it's bounced through. It has for Carlton's first. Two points the margin favouring the Hawks. Ralph appeared to drop his head trying to take that mark. Was under plenty of pressure. Pushed back again towards Shine. A long kick down towards McKenzie at full forward. Burn is there with him and takes a good one hander. Well, certainly appears to be over that ankle problem that he incurred last week. But the selectors saw fit not to play him in the seniors. Gagan, another hurry kick down towards half forward. No one could pick it up. Eventually, McKenzie's kick is smothered. Off the boot, Abbott couldn't take it. Gagan, another chance. Caught by Deer. Not before he gets a short kick. Byrne uses the body. Considine comes through with strength. Gets a kick out wide towards the wing. The bounce is not a good one. An opportunity for the Hawks through McGrath. Hooking it up towards Malaxos. On the boundary line he goes, Goldwood's a good looking kick, Austin going back on it, this time he takes the mark. So Curly Austin clears to Des English, two names synonymous with Blues finals appearances over the years. Nixon, of course Austin has been a little less fortunate than English, Ooh. had some shocking injury problems, Bacanara gets the handball away, Marcazzani tries to hoof it out, does so, Nixon eventually across to Shine, he's caught. And uh, the umpire will eventually come in and decide. Some upon wonderful it. tackling, Sandy, and uh, it's good to see the umpires rewarding the tackling or letting it go. Well, in this case, he's picked out a free kick, and it's going to go the way of Milan Hanna. So Hanna from the half-back flank, looking up towards Scott Howell. He couldn't take it. Gee, Gagan's oh. been in everything so far. Got a bit of a nudge. Marku tried to get it out to him again. Looks for the free kick and will get it. Well, Gagan's going in very, very hard after that football on the half forward line, and it's put a lot of pressure on that Hawthorne defence as we see Marku bring it up towards McKenzie and Howell. It hits the deck. Oh, a bit of a fumble went on there. It's grabbed there by Abbott. Abbott has the ball smothered. Shine tries to crash his way through, was grabbed, I feel. Yes, sit up by Carey. He goes onto the left foot. He kicks wide. Howell slips over just as he's about to take the mark. 
And here comes Whitman as he brings it across towards half forward. McGrath can't take the mark. Oh, bit of a ticky touch with one that is. Uh, Gagan was about to get away with it. But McGrath is on half back flank as he has paid this free kick. He brings it towards the centre wing area. Malaxos out in front. Uses the body beautifully, Steve Malaxos. A wonderful hand pass over the top to Bacanara. A short kick looking for Knights. Austin's got Knights uh, covered up there. It's grabbed there by Pat Perovic. Was he holding it? No, said the umpire. The ball was forced over the line. And, uh, well, there's another player who there could be a question mark about whether he'll be at Carlton next year. I don't want to retire them all, but I think you'd agree, Don. Well, you say this about every grand final side who plays in the Army Reserve. Uh, Peter, every year there are a number of senior players in that position. There's one boy that's certainly going to be with the club for a while. Well, Carlton uh, feel, I know the Carlton feel he's almost there as a player and not quite. Shine to send a wing. Hartney, good oh, good. solidly met. James Bennett does well. Puts it up towards the half forward line once again. And the mark is taken by Dave Sullivan. That hurt Hartney too. He's, he, the trainers are out to him because he better really braced himself there and that was a hard knock. Now Sullivan, 40 metres out, using the drop punt. Good looking kick off the boot and he's put it through for Hawthorne's second. So they move to 2-2, two -two, 14. Again, opening up an eight point break. Carlton, one solitary goal. Well, this is why I picked Hawthorne is the number of younger players that they've got. Uh, they're a little bit underdone as far as experience is concerned, but their enthusiasm cannot be questioned. And this fellow here, young Sullivan, a terrific mark by uh, Bennett then under pressure from Hartney. Hartney really did go for the ball, set it up beautifully, Bennett across to Sullivan. And Sullivan's played a number of good games, captain of their under 19 side. Robertson was tackled far too high there. Colin Robertson, he's been a hero in a couple of Hawks finals teams as he brings it towards half forward or oh, Bacanara looking dangerous up there there's young Sullivan ducking the oh. head in went Malaxos in there also is uh, Robertson now it's Curran dispossessed grabbed by Wow Jones brings it out towards Gagan or oh, they flew against each other and Rocket Rodney Eade anticipates beautifully he goes short to half forward and the mark has been taken by a leading Peter Knights. Now he's a long way out from goal in front of the Melbourne members stand as we see the replay a beautiful lead and a lovely pass. First time the Hawthorne players have actually picked him out he's been in front on every occasion first time. Well there's the drop punt it's a high floater up towards the goal square players fly and the big Carlton uh, backmen have forced it through or one behind. There's a close up of Peter what a great player he's been for Hawthorne for many many years mainly at centre half back 2-3 Hawthorne and Carlton on one goal. Back into play once again. Hartney looking to recover from that bump. Ede gets the handball away. Here's another man who can take a bump. Teal down towards the half forward line. Malaxos the opportunity now. Claimed by Marku. Loses it. Austin clear. Not a well delivered kick however. He's looking for Gagan but Ede intercepts. Decides to centre the football. Well, there's a couple of them there. Considine at the back. Deert not quite having the pace. Hannah being called back 15 metres. So Considine again to put Hawthorne deep into attack. And another one. Interesting to note, Sandy, there's only two Hawthorne players on their back line. That's the indication of why Hawthorne, their seniors and reserves, are the best running side in the competition. They're prepared to take a risk and go down and kick goals. That was bad play by Millam Hannah. He gave away a 30-metre penalty. Now it puts uh, Considine right in front of goal, only 35 metres out within kicking distance as we see the kick by Paul Considine, and it's a goal. We're back in the middle, having played almost 17 and a half minutes of this first term, and Hawthorne handy leaders. 3-3 three, three to one straight goal. Deer up against Jones. Taken away by Malaxos, down towards Sullivan on the half forward line. Bacanara attempts to shepherd out Nixon, not successful. Nixon across to Kenny, he's claimed. Another good tackle by Nixon, but English is able to clear it down towards centre wing. Hannah takes the mark, driving Carlton now down towards the right half forward flank. Ralph, late on the scene, tapped over the back. And a chance for Byrne, receiving the handball. Clears with a short pass down towards the half back line. Considine is there once again, but the boundary line too close and another throw. Byrne has done some absolutely magnificent work using his body. Hasn't had a number of kicks, but punching the ball out and terrific smothering. Very well done in the back pocket. Greg Deer against Scott Howell. 
Considine charges after it, but it beats him over the line. Now, I just wonder if they're... Uh, has he been on the ball yet, Don? No, Burns uh, playing so he's permanent on McKenzie in the forward yeah, pocket. permanent back pocket, Michael Byrne, which uh, would surprise a lot of people, although they've got a tall man there in uh, Deer, as we see Malaxos bring it down towards uh, centre wing. There's Sullivan, who Don is very impressed with. Mark Asani, ton of pace, gives it to English. Taken away by Considine. Over to Rodney Eden. The Hawks are looking great in this first it's quarter. On behind play. As it's a fight on, but watch Eden as he brings it down to what oh, that's spoiled that play as the mark has been taken by Wow Jones. He breaks away. He goes for the short pass and finds Shane Robertson. Robertson brings it further around, looking for Ricky Nixon as the fight has uh, subsided there. And uh, there's Malaxos getting up. And the umpire says the ball was out of bounds. Scoreboard showing 3-3 Hawthorne, Carlton one goal. 19 and a half minutes played, first term. Unable to get the kick was Mark Koo. Sullivan again will see it over the line. 15 point margin, favouring Hawthorne. Goal kickers have been Considine, Whitman and Sullivan. Whilst for Carlton, Neil Gagan has kicked their only major. Jones, Bordelotto, he's had shocking injury worries throughout the year. Gagan tries to storm through but loses the footy. Almost be a kicking in danger. Well, it's going to go back to Hartley. Centre of the ground. Ralph gives him a lead. Unable to complete the mark, however. And once again, Morrissey clears. Out wide, the running rocket. Rodney Ede is away. Will he get claimed by Muller? No, he just gets his kick in time. Down towards Bacanara. With him is Kenny, his immediate opposition. Kenny, the victor on this occasion. Curly Austin, the hurried kick back towards the centre. Morrissey was there. Gagan affects the spoil. Gee, he's playing strong footy. Gets the handball out. Muller's under a bit of pressure. Onto the right boot, he goes. Whitman goes for a soccer off the ground. Taken by Abbott. Down towards Malaxis at half forward. Jones pushes it out wide. Only to see Bacanara pick it up. He's claimed by Mark Koo. And eventually it'll be Robertson who gets Carlton out of trouble. Down towards Marquezan, uh, Scott Howe on the left half forward flank. Howe flicks it back. Ralph slips at the critical stage. Howard is with him, applying plenty of pressure. And eventually all oh. Ralph can do is head for the boundary line. But he's picked out a free kick. And perhaps a little bit of bad luck well, for was, Glenn it was, it was great play by Warren Ralph, the way he used his body. But I felt a bit sorry for Glenn Howard. He didn't want the ball, Peter. Well, well, if you have a look at him replay, here on replay, what's this? Putting... But a good use of the body, wasn't oh. it? To get himself in front, oh, that's what I'm saying. Ball in. Yeah, it was a bit stiff, uh, Howard, to get that given against him. They were both battling hard for the ball. But Ralph, well, I've already spoken about his kicking ability, but this is a very, very difficult one from the boundary line, about 40 metres out from goal. But if anyone could do it, he could. There's that oh, magnificent-looking drop punt. What a kick. Goal. Here's the centre bounce once again after that goal. Socket off the ground by Perovic, but straight towards Sullivan of Hawthorne. Hannah applying the pressure. Loses it. Pushes it out wider for Marcazani. Now, this boy has enormous pace. Can't get away on this occasion, however. Down towards Gagan he goes. Gagan oh. tried to tap it forward. Was he held? The umpire says no. We'll play on. So Shine gets it across to Hannah. Hannah a pop shot at the goals. Just off target. And one point over. Well, there's uh, Millam Hannah. I think he's a Lebanese boy. If he plays uh, senior football, I think he did play he one has. game on the bench. So um, first Lebanese well, football. First Lebanese boy, and here's Muller. Half forward flank, Ian Muller. Ton of uh, natural skills, Muller. He goes for the short pass. A beautiful lead by Warren Ralph out in front of Michael Byrne, and Ralph has marked about 25 to 30 metres out from goal on a very slight angle. Look at this on replay, Don. Well, that's bad play by Hawthorne because Ralph led into that hole and Hawthorne should have dropped the Ruckman or another player there and it was just set up for Ralph because uh, Muller is a good kick and uh, really had a ton of area on which to lead and take that ball. Let's see what he can do. There's the kick on its way. The goal umpire has a good look and says, yes, they're back in business. Warren Ralph has kicked his second, and the Blues have now bridged the gap with two quick goals, a two-point margin at the 23-and-a-half-minute mark. Here again on replay, uh, Muller across to 
Ralph, I was just thinking that uh, Ralph is a, a, would be a frustrating player to play with because sometimes he ducks his head at the crucial moment just as he's about to take a lay down Mazaire and uh, yet on other occasions can kick beautifully as he did then. I notice young Teal is off the ground and Michael Gertz has come onto the ground as it's back in the centre. Chance for Considine. Wow, Jones is in there. Now Hawthorne through Curran. Bring it down towards half forward. James Bennett got the run of the ball. He gets the bounce also. Swings onto the left foot. A beautiful little pass. Oh, Knights has dropped the sitter. As it comes, there's kicked off the ground by Austin. Lands in the hands of Marku. He brings it up towards centre wing. Hannah flew from behind. The base of the pack. Who's that? Morrissey. Grabbed by Nixon. Nixon brings it out towards half back. Half back for Hawthorne, that is. Colin Robertson. Normally a very good handballer, but this one was smothered. But getting back to that lead by Ralph, you can't tell me that if the ball is about 70 metres out from goal, it is not a better idea to have someone just chip in short than go for that automatic kick to the goal square every time. And that was intelligent play by Carlton. As we see, the ball is smothered there. Whitman's got it. He comes down the centre of the ground. He brings it towards half forward. Desi English, is it, or Bordelotto? It's Bordelotto has got it. Swings away on the right foot and brings it right out wide where Warren McKenzie has led for the ball. A lovely hand pass. Lands with Ian Muller. Onto the left foot he goes. Brings it to half forward. Howard has taken the mark. And uh, Glenn Howard's got a big job today on Warren Ralph. Short. In towards uh, the centre of the ground. And Big Abbott leaps away. A deer it was, loping away. Down towards the half forward line. That time Knights come steaming through. He was the only one who really went for that. Don. Go. That's exactly right. And uh, Knights at this stage, he cannot afford to drop those as he dropped one earlier. Short he oh, goes. Oh, nice. and it's not a good kick either. They may get out of trouble here through Considine. Deer calling for it at half forward. Uh, but Considine decides to head for home. Down towards full forward. Oh, and the well, mark huh. has been taken by Bacanara. Plays on. Swings round. And the kick. It's good. Well, that was absolutely fantastic play by Bacanara. Number one. The way that he took the mark there from behind, he did not infringe. He jumped that little early, bit earlier, which he did in the seniors a couple of weeks ago uh, out at Waverley. We'll see it here. Launched himself that little, early, little earlier than the opposition, put him off balance, but then the thing was he took a good mark, didn't rest on his laurels, took off and kicked a beautiful goal from deep in that forward pocket. 4-3 Hawthorne, Carlton on 3-1. We're seeing a great game of football here in the Armour Reserve Cup Grand Final. There's Mark Koo onto the left foot, down towards half forward. It's a good mark by Whitman. Whitman brings it towards uh, half forward. Oh, Curly Austin comes out and he's playing a very solid game. He and Des English down in defence. Austin. Oh. Oh, the umpire is saying that Peter Curran went over the mark there. Curran not agreeing with him, but uh, Austin is brought right up towards that centre square area with that uh, familiar drop punt of his as he brings it towards Scott Howell. Hannah was there also. That was almost a mark as uh, Hannah tackled by G. Bacanara really putting himself into this game. But Hannah on the left foot, a high one to Ralph. Oh, good mark to Warren Ralph, a beautiful mark, and you know, those couple of goals have given him a tremendous amount of confidence. Well, Ralph here we see on replay came up over the back, and the Hawthorne player, I think, made it look a little bit better because he really didn't get off the ground. So, Ralph, a long, long way out from oh. goal, going for the oh. torpedo oh. punt, and it's a towering kick that across was the face of goal, kick. and one point is the result. Well, he is an unbelievable kick. Yes. That was a torpedo from well, the edge of the square. Well, we said that earlier. I, I think that, you know, there is no better kick in league football than uh, Warren Rolfe. There's no doubt about that as we see Glenn Howard bring it out towards the half-back area. And that's a good mark there taken by Peter Kenny. And that's the ball was uh, shoved out of the way. And it's 15-metre penalty against Hawthorne there. Getting back, back to... Sorry, Dot. I was just wondering if there's any relation to Paddy Kenny. I don't think he is. <laughs> Kenny is a West Australian. Paddy Kenny from Eddie Collingwood. There's a long torpedo putt. That's a goal. Oh, I hit the post. A beautiful kick. We've seen some great kicking down here by the Carlton side. And, uh, well, the difference is now only one goal. Hawthorne 4-3, Carlton 3-3. Glenn Howard brings it back in again. Considine marks in the back pocket. Looking up towards the wing. He goes long. Gertz waits down. Carlton out of trouble once again. Nixon, not oh, a well good done, bounce. Bennett. 
James Bennett a chance. His handball up towards the half forward line. Here they go through Gertz, who's followed play down. Malaxos combining with him, but just beaten by the siren. And the good passages of play not rewarded, I'm afraid. And so at quarter time, Hawthorne, 4 3, 27, leading Carlton, 3 3, 21 on the seven sports scoreboard. Quarter time, scores show Hawthorne 4 3, 27, Carlton 3 3, 21. As I just mentioned, James Morrissey has been sidelined, and we'll see if Peter Donegan will be able to find out the extent of the injuries. That's the Carlton lineup we're looking at at the moment. Now there's Morrissey, and uh, I noticed a couple of trainers having a word with him. He then left the group and came and uh, sat down on the edge of the ground. Let's hope he's okay for the Hawks because he is a most exciting young player. Just though he could have received a head injury there, Pete. Yes, I, I think he's uh, a heavy knock. I don't think it's a leg injury, and uh, I think he's looking a little bit dazed. So he. He did cop a heavy knock in a in a pack around the centre half back area at one stage. There's uh, Cole Kinnear, the coach of the Carlton Reserves. He's been a tremendous coach in the VFA here with Coburg. He won a couple of premierships, uh, and he's been assistant reserves coach at North Melbourne between 1981 and 1983. And is really a, really a top class coach, even though he's one of the one of the Those guys that have made it without playing league football. I think Ray Jordan is the other one who's an outstanding junior coach and didn't play league football. All right, gentlemen, let's have a look at some of the highlights of the first quarter and to take us through them, Don Scott. Well, this is the first goal by uh, young Whitman, number 43, and he drifted way down from that half-back flank and uh, that overcomes a lot of problems as far as pace when you've got players prepared to do that. There is Gagan, who has been a very, very busy player. Maybe a little bit short in match practice, but uh, and that'll find him out later on. And this was a magnificent kick for goal by Warren Ralph. That was the first. Maybe we'll see the other one later on. Knights, I don't think he's terribly fit. He, there it is. That was a shocking kick. He got up limping. Knights have been carrying quite a few injuries. And young Constantine's been a very, very consistent player. And here was Buccanara's magnificent mark. And there, and there it is. He ran off, screwed it around. Good play. Well, the other person, I know we've talked about James Morrissey, but it's interesting to note that Peter Knights has a very heavily now strapped right knee. Yes, he, I think he uh, hurt his knee when he went for that diving mark around about uh, centre-half forward, Don, that we commented when he was the only one who really went for the ball. And he got up and he had his uh, hands down on his knees and he looked very, very upset. So he's hurt that knee again slightly and he's got a very, there is a shot of it with a heavily strapped right knee and a bandage above the knee as well so being a little flippant Peter uh, Peter's usually very well uh, color coordinated in the last couple of weeks he's had a band a brown bandage I wonder if he's got that in his bag uh, because really that particular bandage the way it was strapped then would be of no use whatsoever you know it wouldn't be giving support to ligaments or whatever well, well that <laughs> appears to be uh, decided sort of also limping. by the trainers but he's, he's, he's certainly not hundred percent and he's also been down this week with a bout of the flu, so it really hasn't been a top week for Pete. Well, we saw a good shot of Terry Gay, the uh, Hawthorne doctor there, and uh, yes, well, he... Terry was a, a very, very good player for Hawthorne many years ago. Just about set to resume the second term here at the MCG of the Army Reserve Cup Grand Final, and the Hawks, after starting uh, in great fashion, with a six-point lead. Here we go from the centre bounce. Let's see what they can do this time. Wow Jones getting a long run at the football, but it was won by Deer, pushed further down half forward line by Curran. First to this one could be Perovic. Not picking it up, just soccering it towards the boundary line. And again, gains some oh. 10 metres towards Gagan. He goes onto the left foot, owned towards Howell. Couldn't take the mark. Over his head it goes. No one able to pick it up. Eventually the handball comes out towards Robertson. He's clear. Kick partly smothered. He goes in towards Big Greg Deer. Loping after it. He picks it up. Tumbles a punt to half forward. But once again in front of Bacanara is Peter Kenny. Back towards centre wing he goes. Big pack of players. Gagan was in it. Howell waiting down towards the boundary line. Still in play. Back with Gagan. 
picking up plenty of touches down towards shine just tried to tap it over the back but there was no one at home robertson on the other hand has support the handball was unable to be taken ralph does he want the football enough no said the umpire it's a good no, decision by the it umpire. was an excellent decision he made no attempt whatsoever to get that one out and the umpire peter carey was on to that michael gertz started off on interchange as he brings it down towards half forward curran trying to do a bit of wrestling grabbed by mckenzie has been moved away from the forward line marcus Arnie hasn't been in it a lot so oh. far too high said the umpire marcus Arnie might be hurt here let's see if he's hurt his shoulder doesn't look too good frank Frank Marcusani, he wants to get rid of that ball very quickly, but he now gets away and kicks it on the right foot, a wobbly old one down towards the forward line. Chance for Scotty Howell, beautiful play down to Ralph. He can't get back quickly enough over his head and through for one point. As we see, James Morris, he looks still holding his head, so he's obviously collected one pretty heavily around the head area. As we see the scoreboard showing Carlton on 3-4, Hawthorne 4-3. Good ah, back Greg Deere, as Don said, a good mark. Beautiful step pass to Sullivan. David Sullivan, captain of their under-19s this year, on the left foot, up towards Bacadara at Knights. Knights is not holding his marks today, but here he goes. The blonde bombshell as he gets oh. it towards the forward pocket. Oh, boy, they've missed that one up. Hawthorne knocked away there by uh, McGrath. Beautiful play to keep it in. Now it's Peter Knights grabbing it. A flying pot shot at the goals. The high one. Bacadara from behind. Oh, boy, there's a sign of class. What a mark by Gary Bacanara. Yes, well, that deserves, and I did give it a round of applause because uh, that was a very good mark. And there you see it on replay. That was fantastic. And now he lines up for his second goal, and he is another very, very good kick for goal. 20 metres out, directly in front. Bacanara's shot is all clear. So Gary Bacanara has kicked his second goal. And the Hawks sneak away again. 5-3, plays 3-4. In that passage just leading up to there, we'll just is off air but Knights really when he should be going for uh, those marks Peter in the fact that he's injured he should be taking them shouldn't he because yeah. you really don't get a second opportunity especially in finals and especially in football you're dead right especially if you if you are carrying an injury well not a hundred percent you've got to make every post a winner there is uh, Hartney crashing his way through down towards uh, Bradley Shine hasn't been in it all that much he had a great game in one of the finals where he kicked six goals Whitman players pouncing on top of it about center half board area for Carlton they're trailing at the moment by uh, three four to five three 22 plays 33 so 11 points the difference umpire Howlett bounces the ball Flintoff was there now oh, Sullivan's doing a power of good work he gets it to Malaxos Malaxos to half board punched away by Bacanara that was good play and good shepherding there is uh, covering him well was Greg Deere he hooks it back the mark has been dropped there by Hartney. He goes in after it again. He's backed up by uh, Kenny. Kenny out wide. Gives it to Bordelotto. Bordelotto a beautifully directed kick. Finds Neil Gagan. Gagan. Now, what's going to happen here? It'll be a professional 15 metres, that one. And Bacchanara, that'll be 30 metres against Gary Bacchanara. And if he doesn't hurry back, it'll be another 15. Let's see. No, he gets back onto the mark. Neil Gagan. Going in very hard, he has been in this game. There's Ralph, nearly took the mark. Play on, said the umpire. Howell tries to crash his way through. Flintoff to Considine. Considine with a long hand pass towards centre wing area. Kenny cleverly gets it out to Perovic. Perovic towards half forward. Or you see the strength of the wind there. The mark was dropped. Gagan is there. Brings it back towards Ralph. Warren Ralph flies from behind. He goes in after it again. St playing for the free kick there. And the umpire said he made no attempt. Oh, gee, but that wasn't that similar to the free yeah. kick he received yeah. earlier. Yeah, very similar. As the hand pass comes out to Robertson. Robertson, oh, gee. A mistake made by Michael Gertz there. Sullivan, oh, doing a power of work. Over to Gertz. Back to Considine. Considine handballs to himself. Goes in after it again. Hannah's there also. It's on centre wing. And uh, the bounce will take place. Almost six minutes played, Pete, in this second term. 
and Hawthorne leading by 11 points. Deer and Jones. Well, it was a shocking bounce, and in fact, Des English has gone for it with James Bennett. And Des wins out. Down towards the half forward line, Robertson defensively over the line. Actually, the umpire, when he bounced that ball, came off the uh, painted area of the pitch to get a better bounce, and it really didn't help. Maybe he should have stayed on the painted area. Oh, well, a of wealth paint. of information, oh, Don. A lot of trivia, Peter, but it's interesting. Well, there's uh, Abbott getting it down there to Flintoff. Back to Abbott. Abbott on the right foot. Nixon. And Des English, he's a cool player. He never seems to get flustered, but on this occasion, he's uh, kicked just offline and marked there by Whitman. Whitman brings it towards half forward. Perovic was oh, shoved out by Curran. And umpire Carey in magnificent position, side on to view that. And a free kick uh, must go to Vladimir Perovic. Now, Carlton making a change. Wow Jones is off and Rhett Baines on. Perovic's kick down towards half forward. Considine underneath it. So too was Mark Azani. Gagan unable to take it. Baines straight on the ground. Got a touch. But in the meantime, free kick is going to go the way of Considine, who's been busy in this game. Sixth kick. Carlton little men have got to do more, Sandy. They're yep. uh, when around the packs, they're just not doing enough good work. Considine's floating punt in towards the centre. Perovic at the back of Howe couldn't take it, but he does have enough support to get it back towards Shine. Hannah drifting down to the half forward line. He elects to go longer. Ralph's the target. Couldn't take it. Is clear though. Gets a hurried kick. Won't come back far enough. And Michael Byrne again defending stoutly. Gets it out across towards. Flint off. He goes further forward down towards the half back line. Now it's with Considine on the wing. Considine's kick up towards Bacanara. Oh! <laughs> Lucks it in with the one hand. Has he got some class or not? Gee. Knight's the target. He looks for Knight. tight. He is an amazing player, that Bacanara. The only thing wrong yep. with him, he lacks a yard. Well, that's the only reason he's that, not in the senior that, side. He's only lacks a yard because of that. Uh, very very serious operation he had and that was an absolute tragedy in a grand final for that to happen to Buccanaro there's the kick by Peter Knight's a beautiful looking drop punt it's a goal plays 3-4 favoring the Hawks as Don mentioned Marcus Arney off the ground and Kennedy on Nixon overruns it Kennedy a chance now smothered by Curran has the ball taken away Sullivan could give it to Malaxos no he doubles back Flicks it in towards full forward. Perovic going back. Bortolotto's dropped what he should have taken. This allows McGrath through. He's clear. Gets it onto the right boot, but it goes straight up in the air. Knights is underneath this. If he can take it, he can't. What's his recovery like? Tries to scoop the ball forward. Loses it, and Austin is ridden over the boundary line. So, throw in to take place. But the Hawks doing all the attacking at the moment, Peter. They certainly are, and they look the better side at the moment. Peter Knights, if he starts taking his marks, it'll be how far Hawthorne. But uh, there's Malaxos. Gets a hand pass to Bacanara. The touch of class again as he hooks it back. The Curly Austin, ever reliable, terrific uh, contributor all the time, Rod Austin. Ever since, he's, uh, ever since he first started at Carlton, he's been a great competitor. As we see the ball, half-back flank, Mick Kennedy couldn't keep it in play. 43 is McKennedy for Carlton, who replaced Frank Marcusani. And uh, Carlton cannot get their game going. Warren Ralph is looking very dangerous down at full forward, but they're not getting it down there often enough, as we see Scott Howell in front. Beautifully punches it wide, but uh, it beats Bradley Shine over the line. A lot of those Carlton players who were so dominant in the other finals games, Don, are battling today. Yes, well, it's hard to come up under the pressure that Hawthorne are applying, and they're being rewarded every time they go now into the forward line. Centre wing, Kennedy. Oh, dear, was going to boot it off the ground. The umpire said that uh, Hartney copped one in the back. Umpire there being David Howlett. Hartney, not a long kick. Hannah, can't take the mark. But Kennedy's there. Taken away by Whitman. A nice hand pass to Deer. Deer to Robertson. Colin Robertson has got it. He dodges around. He's got a ton of pace, Robertson, and great skills. Onto the left foot. He's looking for Curran. Curran dodges around. Half forward flank. He brings it to half forward. Who's there for Hawthorne? It's a mark. The mark has been taken by Roger Ellingworth. 
at set a half forward the ex Melbourne player as we see it in replay a mark on the chest he is 40 meters out directly in good front. play by Curran then because he kicked it into uh, that uh, center corridor and it's much easier to kick goals when you're in that corridor the kick from Ellingworth looks good off the boot but just drifting slightly and one point only well a touch of deja vu for Roger Ellingworth who of course was here last year with uh, the Melbourne Club that's right as we see uh, Rod Austin now what's happening there it's a free kick down the field against uh, it's against a Hawthorne player down around center back area and the free kick is going to Carlton Nixon towards center wing Carlton really need to get a move on Hawthorne have been looking very very impressive border lotto takes the mark on center wing they've got loose men everywhere Carlton but oh he's gone wide Gagan just marks it inside the line oh here's Mark Koo on his own in front of the Melbourne members standing a long way out he fires at goal a one out duel McKenzie and Byrne over the back is McKenzie as the ball hits the deck what is it it's a free kick going Carlton's way to Muller right in front of goal the umpire saying he was pushed in the back let's have a look at it in replay well really I suppose Ellingworth went right over the top then he he was going at such a speed Muller fell over and he went over the top and uh, it was an unfortunate free the shot at goal is good and a much needed one for the Blues Ian Muller kicks his first and Carlton's fourth so they trail by 12 points 4-4 plays 6-4 on the seven sports scoreboard well I think every year with there it is in replay again as we see uh, Muller yes no doubt a free kick good umpiring but every year we come here Don for the uh, Armour Reserve Cup final it's terrific to watch it's almost like a senior game well it is Peter and I love finals because it really does show you what players are made of where and how people do react and sportsmen under pressure Back pressures. to the centre bounce. And pressure's what it's all about, Don. Yes, 13 and a half minutes played, second term. An attempt at soccer off the ground. Hartney unable to take it. Picked up by Kennedy, a hurried kick down towards Bordelotto. Oh, well done by McGrath, who fisted it downfield to Bacanara. Back to McGrath, his great football. Knight says go over the top, but he slips at the crucial time. Picks it up, goes onto his left foot, high in towards the square. Hartney is there. Pisted away by Nixon. Back towards Knights. Howells on his hammer. Gives it to Bacanara. Danger here as he snaps it. Goal. Oh, he's kicked the beauty. The Hawks. Ede gets the handball away. Robertson couldn't take it. Gagan a hurried kick. Down towards the half forward line. Carlton desperately wanting a goal. In trouble is Whitman for the Hawks. As he appeared to have his leg wrenched as he tried to get a kick away I think Don would agree I think Hawthorne are going in much harder after the ball and wanted more than what Carlton do at this stage well they're doing much better in the forward line aren't they Peter and uh, Carlton are leaving it to blokes like Gagan to do all the heavy work and uh, there he is set on he's been in absolutely everything young uh, Neil Gagan down towards half forward Howard in front of Ralph hand pass out wide look at the pace of Warren Ralph though beautiful football Warren Ralph over to Alex Marku, he hooks it back. Here's a chance for Brad Shine. Oh, good mark. He braced himself. He thought Ooh, easily courage. have been unloaded there. He had to stand there and wait for the high floater, and he took the you mark. See this, if you heard an eyes in the back of his head, I wonder if he still would have stood there. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brad Shine, the ex-West Aussie, he played, kicked six goals in a recent final, and uh, he is only 15 metres out directly in front. He stabs at that one, and he has put it through. Well, that's Brad Shine's first goal. He kicked a number of goals last week. In actual fact, every time he got the ball last week, he had 16-odd kicks. He kicked six goals, and uh, he just seemed to have a purple patch at one time and just kicked goals with every kick that he got. And that was well centred by Mark, who Shine there had Abbott coming from one way, Byrne from the back, and he stood his what ground. What would you have done, Don? If you I would have, no, if no, you were I coming from 10 hole. metres away, what would you have done? I would have done... Oh, if I was the... You would have run into him, or what? <laughs> not much you would have rushed heard him. it <laughs> <laughs> rushed him. I don't think Brett Shine would have taken the mark if you had have been 10 metres away Malaxos couldn't take it can Considine out of the middle no he can't Malaxos again this time over the head Curran but uh, I think it was deemed a throw and so it will be Kennedy the receiver of the free kick special comments coming from Don Scott and of course Don once again today awarding the $100 to the player he considers the best on the ground he just mentioned Brad Shine Shine was the winner a couple of uh, games ago 
after a fine performance. Here's Kennedy. Bennett. Ralph just taps it clear for Hartney, who kicks it wide, goes out of bounds on the full, and should be brought back into play by David Flintoff. You could see if Carlton get their game going and leave Ralph uh, one out, they, they could cut you to pieces because uh, Ralph is a very, very quick player as we see the ball being brought back in towards the centre wing area. Robertson, Baines gives it to Shine. Shine a hurry kick to Mark Koo. He has the ball punched away. Glenn Howard, or is it uh, Flintoff? Flintoff, Flintoff. They had the, the two lookalikes. Up towards, that was Flintoff on that occasion, up towards... Uh, Centre wing it is now. Now here's uh, Shane Robertson. Swings onto the left foot. Good Two tackle. Close. What a tackle there by Curran. Grabbed there by Gagan though. Hooks it back. The only player there is Glenn Howard. Takes the mark. Kicks it wide. Malaxos is on his own. We haven't seen a lot of Steve Malaxos today, but he's got a paddock to run in. He goes for the little short chip pass. He finds Rodney Eid. Eid will probably look for Bacanari. He does, but McGrath from behind. Almost a mark. Now the tackle was too high, said the umpire. And the free kick will go to Batanara. It's interesting there, Peter, that the build-up start right at full back, and that is why it's important for now back uh, forwards to pick up Backman, because that started with Glenn Howard. He shot the long one out to Malaxos, and in turn went across to Bacanara. Well, let's see Gary Bacanara. He is, as is Warren Ralph, is a very, very good kick of a football. Now, he's having a great day, Bacanara. Uh, terrific skills as he's kicked three goals. Let's see what he does with this one. I think he's hooked this one across his body and through for one point just struggling to make the distance there and that made his accuracy uh, go offline 5-4 carlton hawthorne 7-5 we're seeing an excellent game of football here as rod austin brings it in from full back and the 19 minute mark of the second term perovic stands his ground takes the mark and plays on now the advantage is played as robertson bounces his way up towards center wing goes with the left foot up towards the half forward line mckenzie is there and didn't realise the ball was still in play. I think at the last minute it just rolled over. Byrne is doing a great job on Mackenzie, Don. We must think alike, Peter, and great minds do think alike on occasions. And I was just going to make that mention that Mackenzie hasn't had a kick. No, he's been very, very quiet. And, uh, well, that's uh, the good player, Byrne, playing him close. There's Kennedy trying to get the kick in. It's on half foot flank in front of the Melbourne members, and up by Howlett will bounce it. Let's see who's doing the ruck work here. It's Mackenzie against Byrne, his immediate opponent. Long way out from goal. They're uh, both, I think, having a spell on the ball at the moment. Oh, a big backhand punch by Gertz. Beautiful play to Sullivan. Sullivan looking for Curran. Oh, he braced that himself. But that was in the back, but what a mark all the same to uh, Bacanara. He's got a terrific judgment, but the free had been paid to Carlton and this looks like uh, Nixon or Kenny Kenny Peter Kenny I think it is it is as he brings it down towards half forward punched away by the Hawks defense oh Robertson ducks the head oh how did yeah. he get through that pack he's got it oh great play down the Ralph oh what terrific play by Robertson Ralph was marked five meters out directly in front but you can mark this one down to Robertson it's great play by Shane Robertson who really did sneak out the back door and now Warren Ralph, chance to post his third. He does. Being played just over 21 minutes of this second term here in the Army Reserve Cup Grand Final. And Carlton pegging back this lead of the Hawks. Goals this quarter to Shine, Ralph and Buller. Bacanara and Knights have been in the action as far as goals are concerned this term for the Hawks. Muller, a chance now to put Carlton down towards Shine again on that left half forward flank. With him is Robertson. Ralph comes out to do the shepherding work. But uh, the ball goes over the line and so a throw-in will take place. Well, Carlton making the change of taking Warren Jones off the ruck, put, uh, out of the ruck, have put uh, Scott Howell back and he turned the tables two weeks ago too when he went into the ruck and I think it's a good move uh, bringing McKenzie out the centre half forward as well because he's not doing anything in the pocket. Byrne wins it. Straight to Gagan. Turns one way, then back. Goes high towards Ralph McKenzie. Has been silenced by Byrne. Hannah picks it up. A hurried kick across the face of goal. Here's a chance now. A race in two. Ede pushing the ball along in front of him. Still going towards the boundary line. Keeps it. No, cannot keep it in play. Des English applying the pressure. And eventually it goes over for a throw -in. 
Seven points favouring Hawthorne. Carlton into attack. Ede thumps it clear. Gains probably five or six metres uh, before it is taken over the line by Kennedy once again. Now it looks as though James Morrissey is back in business and he comes back onto the ground now at the expense of Roger Ellingworth. Hartney towards half forward. Touched off the boot it must have been because Robertson immediately punched it to the ground. Ede goes in caught with the ball and the oh. umpire said it's holding the ball gee that was red hot because yeah. I thought he was pinned by but one the arm. the umpire was in the wrong position Peter and you can't blame it. it was an honest mistake by the umpire. Well there's Bradley Shine towards the pocket oh. Ralph. Oh boy it just snuck in there over the outstretched hands of Whitman. Ralph has kicked free. He's marked in the pocket and I'd never say this bloke couldn't kick a goal because he is a magnificent kick and he often kicks these miraculous ones. Ralph has been a very, very good player today for Carlton. He loves the big grounds. He's got tons of space to move. He's got great pace and is a great kick. So let's see what he does with this one. Warren Ralph. Oh, it's floating back. It looks good. What a goal. Four <laughs> goals to Warren Ralph. You summed it up there, Peter. What a goal. But I think he was let in there by young Whitman. Whitman took his eye off the ball and he could have put a hand up there and he was worried about the opposition coming in the other direction and that let Ralph in for a goal. We'll see it here on replay. Shine. Now you just see, took his eye off the ball. Oh, I think you're being a bit I hard am there. Not being I, I hard. think that was over his head on that kick. Oh. I don't think he could have touched it really. Oh, Peter, he didn't have a go. Don't you think? No. Well, you know. Oh, he well, I thought it was over his head. But still, I think you're being a bit tough on him as we see Deer down to the ground scrap G they're coming good now Carlton as English gets it down towards the half forward line Howard runs out to meet the ball Baines has dropped back in the goal score on his own if they get the loose ball Carlton it'll be dangerous but there's Robertson gives it to Howard good defensive play Considine gives it back to Howard Howard brings it towards Curran Curran is marked he's on half forward or closer towards centre wing in fact the lead has been made by Buccanara he's got front position Thumped away by the Carlton defenders. Two of them combining there. One of them being Austin. Still at halfback. McKennedy ran into a brick wall. Malaxos to James Bennett. The lead has been made by Knights. He ducks back, but uh, the mark is taken by his opponent down there. And Scott Howell. Now, that was a funny sort of a... Yes, I don't think he's fit Peter Knights, as we see. Coming away with the ball. Curly Austin towards halfback. Gagan doing a power of heavy work again. Allowing uh, his teammates to come through. It's grabbed by Hartney. Flint off. Caught. Deer. Over the back is Gertz. Good play by the young fella as Malaxos now dives on top of it. Good play by Steve Malaxos and he receives a free kick. Into time on now, Peter. One point the difference. Favouring the Hawks. Malaxos a chance to put them deep in towards Knight territory once again. Out of bounds on the full. It came off the boot. A Carlton boot. Now, this is going to mean who will take the kick? Flintoff. Yes, Peter Knight made a bit of territory, I think, perhaps hoping to get the football, but no, it'll be Flintoff. Hasn't goal to date. Tucked right on the boundary line. Using a drop punt, will it drift back in? Not enough. And one point only goes on the board. So they stretch their margin now to two points. Yes, 7-4 plays 7-6. 26 and a half minutes gone in the second quarter. It's been a very, very good game of football. There's uh, uh, Nixon towards halfback where the mark has been taken there by Scott Howell. Howell. Brings it towards the half forward line. Ralph is using his body to perfection down there. It's grabbed by Desi English. Onto the left foot he goes. Tries to centre the ball. He does so, but the fourth on player there in Whitman is there to take the mark. Now Chris Whitman from centre half back brings it towards Peter Curran who flies. Can't take the mark. A hurry kick comes down toward that was from Hartney. Down to Ralph. Here's Warren Ralph. Onto the right foot. Which way will it bounce? Oh, the wrong way. Morrissey. Oh, how about that? He kept the ball in and ran around the other side of the post. I'd love to have a look at that and replay in the moment as we see Rodney Eve 
bringing it towards half back where the mark has been taken by Abbott and that'll be a 15 metre penalty oh that was brilliant play by Morrissey down there and the crowd roared there's uh, Abbott towards Robertson had a 12 metre kick that one interchange being made Baines going off and Rowan Burke coming on towards Malaxos used his body beautifully there Malaxos oh too slow to get rid of it Shane Robertson sprints away, has a bounce, onto the left foot. Oh, it was touched as he had the loose man. Rowan Burke, back to Gagan, who's been an excellent footballer today as he brings it up towards Ralph. Oh, he flies. Nearly took it. Here's Des English. He's got it. Ran out of bounds with it. Had a flying pot shot, but it was out of bounds. Good umpiring by the boundary umpire there in front of the Melbourne members. And the throw-in will take place. Well, have a look, look at this. Morrissey keeps it in. Ah, oh, he actually threw that up. He actually threw that up in the air, ran round the post, collected it and played on. So technically that was a throw. As we then the umpire missed it. As we see forward pocket. <laughs> Gee, the crowd roared when that happened. As we see Considine bringing the ball out of defence. Ricky Nixon, a hand pass. Shine with a long drop punt. The players duck back. It's a mark. It's a mark to Millam Hanna. A beautiful juggling mark right in front of goal. And he is only seven metres out. And this should give Carlton the lead. Well, Hanna there was in uh, more or less front position. He brought it down with a second uh, on his second attempt. And uh, really cannot miss from just here. Hanna's kick is good. And for the first time in the game, Carlton hit the front. Hannah kicks his first. Carlton's 8-8-4. Eight, eight, plays 7-6 on the 7 Sports scoreboard. Not a lot of time left in this quarter. But there it is. One, two, three grabs at the cherry. And Milan Hannah went on to convert. Back in the centre once again. Four points favouring the Blues. What's been a very close, interesting contest so far. Centre bounce. Howell lost it, but they're still able to take it out of the middle, thanks to Hartney. Down towards uh, the half-forward line, although Shine pushed it back. Gets another opportunity. Byrne in trouble. Has the ball held, said the umpire. Hands it back to Des English. No doubt a couple of happy words. And then down to business again. Rowan Burke, as we said earlier, on the ground for Carlton. Robertson's hurried kick down towards the half-forward line. The bounce. Will it favour Malaxos? He's going to be beaten for pace, I think, by Perovic. Bacanara now. Bumped out of the way. Perovic grasps it nicely with the one hand and is going to receive the free kick. But there's the siren, so Perovic, although he can whoop a football, certainly won't do any damage there. And at half-time, Carlton 8-4. 52 after a five goal quarter leading Hawthorne 7 6 48 and we welcome you back to the MCG the applause you may be able to hear in the background is for the Little League champions in fact it was a draw this year between two sides the Bombers and the Kangaroos they've just completed their lap of honour well one man who's got a bird's eye view of what's happening today is Norm Beeman because Norm is up in the Channel 7 News helicopter taking a sneak look from above, so I think we'll take his report now. Thanks very The MCG is looking quite spectacular from up here, Sandy, and the atmosphere is certainly building. Surprisingly, there is a uh, very little traffic problem around the ground at this time. The main arterial roads leading into the MCG are flowing quite smoothly, which is uh, quite a surprise for myself. Although a lot of people must have left early because the car parks around the ground uh, are near to capacity at, at this time. Although there is still some parking available uh, over around the Olympic Park area, Sandy. Weather-wise, things are not looking too bad. There's a rather heavy cloud bank out to the northwest of the city, but the uh, helicopter pilot assures me that there's likely to be little more than showers result out of that. We've got a uh, current temperature of around 12 degrees and a southeasterly wind of 15 to 20 knots. So
Thank you, Norm, for that report. And uh, there is a wonderful shot from our Channel 7 helicopter. And uh, traffic looks to be flowing pretty well. Of course, there's been plenty of build-up since the early hours of the morning with people coming in to watch not only the Army Reserve Cup but also the under-19s in which Richmond were successful over North Melbourne. It is one of the truly great sporting sights to see this ground fill to capacity as it will be a little later on in the afternoon and my word we're all looking forward to yet another classic confrontation between Essendon and Hawthorne. Well Peter Donegan as has been the case in recent weeks has also joined us on the Army Reserve Cup. We'll be hearing Pete's reports on the boundary line throughout the game but I think now we'll welcome him once again to our coverage down there on the ground Peter Donegan. Thanks very much, Sandy, and once again, good morning, everyone. Well, down here on the ground, uh, just talking about the conditions for a moment. Now, the flags on top of the big scoreboard have been indicating right throughout the under-19s and uh, also throughout the Army Reserve Cup that there is a fairly strong wind blowing up towards the left of screen, or the Jollymont end. Now, the end that we're talking about, the Jollymont end, is favoured by the breeze, but it is swirling around, as is the case here at the MCG quite a few times with the stands encircling the ground. Sometimes the winds will change direction two or three times in five or ten minutes. But uh, the Jollymont end is the one favoured by the breeze. The condition of the ground is very, very good. There are a few slippery parts, in particular the practice wicket area over on the outer side of the ground. But uh, when you consider the rain that we have had during the weekend last night, uh, the ground is in excellent condition. Sandy, it's uh, worth noting too, just looking at the stats at half time of the Army Reserve Cup, that in the marking department, Carlton leading 31 to 23. And uh, as far as handballs are concerned, well, Hawthorne had the advantage there. But it's a nip and tuck game. And at this stage, of course, only four points the difference. But I can tell you, Sandy, that it really is uh, giving me a buzz to stand down here and see this ground filling up. As you say, it's one of the great sights in sport anywhere in the world. And when there's 100,000 plus people here later on for the big grand final, well, it's just going to be something to be seen to be believed. And the atmosphere down here on the ground already is electric. All right, thank you, Peter. Yes, uh, the atmosphere really is starting to buzz. And as Peter said, when it fills up, the actual noise that comes to you from standing out there in the centre of the ground is really something to be heard. It is quite amazing. And no doubt, those that have been busy with their streamers and with their billboards transported them here to the MCG to show off on football's greatest day. I think we'll take a break, but be back with more here from the Army Reserve Cup Grand Final in just a moment. Just leaving the MCG turf at the moment, the players that are going to be in action for the Bombers this afternoon. Roger Merritt, resplendently attired. Glenn Hawker. Terry Danaher. Paul Vanderhaar, just going up the race now. And the boys going in to prepare for their third successive meeting with the Hawks. Of course, Hawthorne successful on the first occasion. Roger Merritt looking pretty relaxed as he made his way up the race, just receiving some words from well wishers. Essendon successful last year and so now they meet again and once again it's delightful to be able to look down upon one of sports great sporting centres and that is the MCG. At the moment there's probably only half full and Peter Donegan mentioned the excitement that he was feeling out there in the ground at the moment well the mind just boggles does it not Peter McKenna what it's going to be like and you gentlemen are aware of it, what it is like when the ground is full. Yes, it's an, an amazing atmosphere. And, uh, well, I've only been out there actually playing in one, Don. I think you've been in a few yeah. more than me. Well, really, once you're out in the centre there, you really can't hear much. There's just that roar. Once you're in the uh, stands waiting, you hear the, the opposition, if they are out first, uh, you, they really, it is a tremendous roar that comes out of this ground. But once you're out in the centre there, it's just like a normal game. You hear your teammates, and uh, it's amazing that you can still hear them and talk uh, as if there is just nothing happening or the atmosphere around the ground. Well, it certainly affects young players a lot more than the senior players, in my opinion. The players playing their first or second final, you know, they... I don't think you feel your legs for about the first 10 minutes or so because you're so nervous, but uh, once you get in the swing of it, it's another game. But uh, certainly the young players are the ones that are, are affected most by nerves. Well, speaking of uh, feeling the legs, let's go back 12 months to the day. And uh, many will say that the Hawks were starting to feel the legs 
a little bit in the last quarter because Essendon came steaming home to reverse the decision of the year prior. Let's have a look now at some of the highlights of last year's great confrontation once again between these two sides. And from the Melbourne Cricket Grounds, we begin the 1984 VFL Grand Final between Hawthorne and Essendon. Off the hands of the pack, hand pass from Lester Smith to Matthews, who steady shoots at goal! First blood to Hawthorne, and that took only about 30 seconds. Tuck was the flyer, no mark. Here's Robertson, streaming into goal. Two goals to Hawthorne, he couldn't miss them there, could he? And a great start by Hawthorne. The ball over the head of the pack. A bad miss by Foles that time. Going out as Robertson. He's a dangerous player. A shot for goal. This is not bad. Another one. Another one. Duckworth and Matthews. Both find a good. Matthews goes down. He was nearly grabbed by the leg. And Lovridge puts it through for another one. Fight's more interesting. The than fight's the play, still going. I tell you. The players are going over left and right out there. And uh, Duckworth. That was the evener upper. The run of the ball. Fun of the ball comes Ooh. back to Lovridge. He's down. The umpire's found a free kick. Rarita. Grabbed by Matthews. He's looking good as he gives a hand pass to Judge. Judge gets the ball back to Wallace. Backing up well. Back to Judge again. This looks like a goal to me. If I've ever seen one, there it is. It's a beauty. Oh, there's a box on him. Oh, there's a great battle. Matthews with a snap at goal. This is close. It'll be a goal. A goal to Matthews. Down there in the forward pocket as the ball is. Oh, there was a high tackle that time to Baker. Uh, one down there towards that half four line. Watson spins out of the pack beautifully. Gets away from Russo. The kick is not a good one. Finally picked up here now with a long hand pass from Dano. Over to Lazard. He gets the ball back to Williams. This could be dangerous. It could be a goal. And the little rover runs into the goal now. A hand pass coming over to Duckworth. And he scores the goal. So that move paid off. But one, it, it goes straight on the hands this time of Hawk. And he goes off like a racehorse. Short pass. It'll be OK. Oh, he nearly lost it, Van der Haar. But he's got it, doesn't waste any time. He quickly plays on. There's two of them down there. It'll be a mark and a free kick to Duckworth. A good mark. As Luke as Lou called, it would have been a free kick anyway. Yes. There's the kick by Duckworth. Going for goal number two, and he's done it. So the Bombers are coming back. Pack, they want a goal quickly. In front is O'Halloran. This is their goal. Baker puts it through. That's what they wanted. Meagle. Centre wing, Essendon have decided, OK, we go for broke, and that's just what they're doing, up towards full forward again. Oh, Bradbury, here's the goal! It's only a few points in it! Oh, those two goals came up in two minutes. Up it goes there, Baker taps the ball on. Oh, beautiful play! Goes for a goal! And I think they've hit the front! Way by Danaher playing at centre-half back. Oh, Walsh got one from... And there's a bit of bad luck for young Walsh. And, uh, good position. Van der Haar knocked on. There's a go now uh, for Weston. He's put it through for a goal. What a match winner this guy's been. It's had a half forward. This premiership was Sheedy's premiership with these tremendous moves on by Merritt. They're full of running. There's Weston again with a hand pass. Coming over to Watson. This could be another goal. It is. Oh, they're killing him. And Weston look like winning their first premiership since 1965. 11 goals, 874 Hawthorne to Westman. 12 goals, 19, 91. What a performance by Essendon. Some great action there from last year's grand final here at the MCG. No doubt it's going to be just as tense, just as tough, and just as exciting this year. Both sides back out on the ground now for the start of the third quarter of the Army Reserve Cup clash between Carlton and Hawthorne. Don, there's absolutely nothing in this. Carlton hitting the lead for the first time late in the term. Do you think they can go on with it, or can the Hawks peg them back? Well, uh, with the classic Carlton have and the opportunities they've gone for, they've seemed to have done it very well. They haven't got a lot of players playing well. I suppose they can only improve, but Hawthorne are hanging in there, and I suppose you've got to give credit to the young Hawthorne players because they've got a number of players that haven't fired up for themselves. But they're putting the pressure, maybe they're putting the pressure on those particular Carlton players are not letting them get away. And uh, it's a really interesting game. It's in an interesting stage. Four points of difference and uh, in Carlton's favour. And uh, whether they can go on remains to be seen. I mentioned earlier, Don, you're giving away $100 to the best player you consider on the ground. Who's caught your eye in this first well, half? Well, the first half, I think the outstanding player is Bacchanara because uh, the way he's getting the ball and what he's doing with the ball, he's either kicking goals or giving it to somebody uh, of advantage, I suppose Gagan's first quarter was uh, good, but uh, 
Ralph's couple of goals, uh, they were quite good. I thought Peter Kenny's been a solid player. Deer has done well in the ruck. What do you mean his first quarter, uh, Gagan Don? I thought he's been an outstanding player in two quarters. Well, I didn't think he was he was an outstanding player. I'll agree with you. 14 first kicks quarter. for the half. Mm. Yes, he's been a great player, Neil Gagan. And uh, I'd like to give a big rap to, to Warren Ralph. I, I reckon uh, Ralph, well, he has been a maligned player at times at, at the Carlton Football Club. When he's kicking goals, they all think he's a champion. When he's down for one week, they rubbish him. But... Today, I think he's been an excellent player. He's playing in front, he's using his body, he's a magnificent kick, he's leading, and he's giving them someone to fire up at forward. And, and it's been important that he plays well because young uh, Warren McKenzie has been down. Well, he's been moved out to centre-half forward. Michael Byrne has done a terrific job. Actually, I should have mentioned Byrne because he's done a lot of unspectacular things. Right, set to go now, the start of the third quarter in the Army Reserve Cup Grand Final. Carlton leading by four points. Here's the bounce. Jones up against Deer. It's a bounce that favours Big Wow Jones. Gagan tries to tap it over the back. Did so effectively down towards the wing. Abbott couldn't take it for Hawthorne. Eventually a hurried kick comes out towards the wing. Picked up for Hawthorne by Whitman. Kicked a goal in the first term. Down to centre half forward. Now an opportunity for James Bennett. Overruns it and loses it however. And Hartney will get them out of trouble. Ricky Nixon decides to head out wide towards the boundary line. He does have support there. And this will be Bortolotto. He's had a shocking run with injuries. Down towards Howe. Couldn't take it on the first grab, but recovers to give it to English. English fires over the head of Ralph. He goes into goal. But it's off target and one point up. Oh, gee. He could have passed it to Ralph, too. Ralph was on his own in the goal square. 8 5 Carlton. Hawthorne 7 6. There's Des English. Must have seen the big sticks coming down from the back line because he had a shot. He could have given it to Ralph, but still. He was certainly within kicking distance. There's Malaxos getting it towards uh, centre wing. Curran tries to crash his way through. Oh, was that ridden into the ground? It was, said the umpire, against Solomon. And it will go to Ricky Nixon. He goes for the long kick. He's looking out there for Mackenzie, who flies from behind. No mark. Morrissey is back on the ground. Tackled from behind. I think he was grabbed by the foot. So the ball will go back to half-back flank to Jamie Morrissey, who copped. A very, very heavy knock early in the game, and uh, I think he a very sore head. Up towards Curran, thumped away. Oh, here's a chance for English once again. He's playing well, Des English again. Onto the left foot, the little short pass to Ralph. Beautifully spoiled by Howard. English butters up again, was grabbed when he didn't have the football, and the umpire said it's Des English's free kick on half forward flank. Now the ball, back with English. As he hooks that back to the pocket, that was a strange bit of play and puts it out of bounds on the full. So that's not good football from an experienced player. Colin Robertson. Number 32 for Hawthorne. Brings the ball towards uh, Morrissey and Gertz. Morrissey takes the mark. Hand pass to Whitman. Whitman running straight up the centre of the ground, looking for Bennett. Ducking back and taking a good mark, though, is Nixon. Nixon out wide, looking for Muller. He flies from behind. He's got it. Oh, good skills. Onto the left foot. Brings it towards half-forward. Gagan ducks back. Oh, he's as strong as an ox. He's been a terrific player today, Neil Gagan. Off he goes. Hooks it back towards... Oh, long kick towards Ralph. Ralph from behind. Couldn't take the mark. Over the back. A chance for Glenn Howard, his opponent. A long hand pass towards uh, Rodney Ede. Eater further hand pass finds Greg Deer. Deer in the centre of the ground. Brings it out wide looking for Bennett. Bennett is out positioned and well beaten there by Brendan Hartney. Hartney on the half back line goes back towards the fast moving Wow Jones on centre wing. Plays straight on with a handball. The kick comes from Kennedy down towards the half forward line. But once again, the Hawthorne defence just holding up play momentarily. Carlton have done the bulk of the attacking so far in this quarter. Ede and English, two experienced campaigners and over the line. It's an interesting move. Uh, English playing on the half forward. Thank you. Has moved there halfway through the uh, second quarter. Here's the throw in again. Howell from the back. Abbott in front. Howard got a hurry kick then eventually tried to soccer off the ground. Picked up by English. Down towards full forward in front this time. Couldn't take it. McKenzie's having a nasty day. Warren Ralph Tucked on the boundary line, goes with a left foot snap, but is off target and one point only. 
And that one was probably asking just a little too much. Yes, yeah, so as soon as he picked it up, I thought, oh, don't tell me he's going to kick this one. As we see the scoreboard, 8-6 to 7-6, Carlton a goal in front. The mark has been taken by Greg Deere. Half-back flank, hand pass to Michael Gertz. Gertz started off an interchange. He brings it towards the half-forward line. Hartney ducks back. Reliable player, Hartney. Throws the ball away. That was an excellent tackle by the Hawthorne player. Let's see, it's Bennett. And he is a good tackler as he brings it towards full forward. Peter Knights in the middle of the pack. Here's young Sullivan. He's got it. Ball's over at the crucial moment. Still in play, though. And eventually the ball is forced through for a behind to Hawthorne. As we see a bit of an altercation going on there. No doubt the umpires will sort that out. I think they're just trying to find the footy, Pete. <laughs> 54 plays 49. Five points the difference. Just having played five minutes of this all-important third quarter. So often it proves to be this term that can win you or lose you a football match. Robertson from behind. Curran was there also. The free <laughs> pair of it directing the umpire <laughs> and uh, the big woofer was correct towards shine he couldn't take it abbott hurried kick down towards uh, the half forward line perovic taps it straight into his teammate who gets pinged for holding the ball that was brendan hartney currens away knights will come in from the side couldn't take the mark however and a good attempt by peter kenny austin's kick kenny again goes out wide danger here Bordelotto and McGrath Sullivan clear Bacanara in the pocket can run on he does steadies takes his kick and has goal well there's the scoreboard showing one point the difference this time in favor of Hawthorne so the game at a very very vital stage that important third quarter as we see Carlton try to get it out of the center area there's Hannah Gets a hurry kick into Marku, has had a quiet day, Alex Marku. He's at centre half forward, he's had five kicks, Alex. So I think Carlton would be expecting a lot more of him than that. Now, Ralph has made the lead, he's been ignored by Marku, but McKenzie's got his name written all over it, flew too early. Over the back is Howard. Howard brings it towards the half back line. Kennedy controlled that beautifully, gets it back to Robertson. Robertson on the left foot, fires. Ralph flies, was it touched? Yes, said the goal umpire, and through it went for one point so the scores dead set level eight goals seven apiece as we see glenn howard putting the hands up in despair he has no Ooh, one to he kick was it over the line. he was well over the line and the umpire was spotted that one he was a couple of meters over and umpire howlett will come down and that was caused by the fact he was looking for someone to, to give it to and the ball will be bounced right on the line let's see how far actually over he was there he goes well, his not all that on... much. It was only oh, uh, his foot was on the it was line. Only, it was only about a meter over, though. But still, I suppose that well, uh, doesn't matter if it's an inch over. He's actually, still if you watch fringe. fullbacks kick off, they often do actually take that kick over the line, but uh, they usually get away with it. But here's Howlett, umpire Howlett, about to bounce it. Down. Oh, kicked off the ground by Robertson. Oh, it's a goal, I think. Yes. What a goal. So Shane Robertson kicks his first, and Carlton regain the lead. Actually, this was bad play by Byrne. He got the hit out there. He should have thumped that towards the goal line and put it over the boundary. And Robertson kicked that lucky goal, and that may be the goal that Carlton needed. Might just spark them on their way, but they've had a lot of lucky goals, haven't they? Well, Shane Robertson was starting to come into the game, too, Don, in that second quarter. Towards the end, he did a couple of very nice things. As we see, wow, Jones. Going for one of, one of his low trajectory passes. He finds Warren Ralph. Oh, look at the pace. Trip. He's tripped up. He was a... Actually, it was probably a good thing he was tripped up by Glenn Howard because he was off and running towards goal. He's kicked four. Now, he is a magnificent kick. We'll say it again, but I think this might test him out for distance unless he got onto a torpedo punt. Looks like he's going by the way he's holding it. Those thumbs down the, uh, the lace. He's going for the drop punt. Let's see how close he can get. Oh, he tried to kick it too far. The distance was a problem there. He tried to kick it too far and out of bounds on the fall. They're incredible, aren't they? As soon as you give them a rap, I know we've said it before. That was out of foot. Well, he was trying to have kick nominated. it. It was too far out for him. He should have gone the uh, talk because he can kick them as we see Malaxos bring it back in towards the half-back area. It's grabbed by Deer up in the air. 
English punches it beautifully to Gagan. Gagan towards full forward is Marku. He's got it. Left foot, bang. Goal to Carlton. They're starting to fire. Well, Alex Marku. Well, that's the first time. Sorry to cut across you, Sandy, but that was the first time we've seen Alex Marku on a, a couple of other occasions. But he really has got to do a lot more. And that was set up by Des English, who was caught behind Rodney Eady, punched it down to young Gagan. Gagan, who has been a good, uh, good player today, dribbled one across to Marku and Marku running behind the pack picked it up and kicked it and he's got to do a little bit more Alex Marku if they want to continue on in this game Carl. There's no doubt about you. What? You love a man to punch that ball away what? don't you Don? Hey? Robertson takes a buffeting gets the handball clear Curran off the ground a chance for Shane McGrath to answer but no off target and one point only. 10-7, plays 8-8 eight, eight on the seven sports scoreboard. He's been quiet, Don. Uh, McGrath. Well, there's a lot of other players being quiet. I've been very disappointed with Jamie Bennett, too. Kick from Austin. Kenny, the target. Couldn't find him. Out to Bacanara. Danger again here for Carlton. Trying to centre the football on this occasion. Robertson is there and he takes the mark. Within scoring distance... A chance to cut the margin back to only five points. You're saying earlier, Peter, that it might be Bacanara's last season. I believe if he worked on his speed over summer, he would be a real acquisition next year because he's he's got a very very quick head. Well, I don't know that for sure, but there was an article in the paper about it. Kick from Robertson, off target, and could be an expensive one. One point only. Well, actually, the article said that, uh, and. It, I think it quoted Gary there that if he was not selected in the senior side today, he may be heading back home to Western Australia. Well, it'll be uh, certainly Hawthorne's loss and Victorian football's loss. Jones gets the handball out. Shines kick up towards centre wing and Scott Howe, a free kick. Just on the attack side of centre wing, kick smothered by uh, big Paul Abbott and beautifully taken away by David Flintoff, gets his kick across the centre, the bounce for Nixon, he snares it for his teammate, and that was Kennedy, got a short kick, now tries to surge it forward, an opportunity for Perovic, he loses it, Gagan a fierce tackler, Bennett is caught, but the ball was held, said the umpire, yeah. and so a bounce will take place. Good umpiring by Peter Carey there, he is a very good umpire, Peter Carey, and uh, well, some umpires might have played that holding the ball. We had no chance of getting rid of that. Two umpires, Peter Carey and David Howlett, in the centre of the ground. It's grabbed by David Sullivan. He brings it back to half forward, but Carlton's starting to get on top down there. Kenny at centre half back has taken the mark. Peter Kenny brings it towards half forward. Up they go. There's a good mark to Morrissey, but Peter Knights has been well down today. But his opponent is a very difficult man to beat, right, Austin? You, no flair about him. He just goes about his job and he usually beats his opponent. There is uh, Colin Robertson, taken away by Shane Robertson. Bradley Shine couldn't get his kick in. Players pounce on top of it on half forward for Hawthorne. The Rod Austin job's been made a lot easier because Knights is really not moving around. He's playing the old-fashioned full forwards game of mark and kick and uh, it's not on in today's football. Trying to think of someone who played a similar old-fashioned full forwards game. Duck You're Wade. Old-fashioned football. What about Duck Wade? Did he come under that category. We see the ball up towards full forward for Hawthorne. Kenny bundled out of the way. Now here's McGrath. Oh, he goes in. Gagan. Oh, he does the heavy work again over to Curly Austin towards the line. Now Nixon back to Curly Austin. Austin towards centre wing. Greg Deer up in front. Now it's a Millen Hanna. Kennedy has done a, some good work in this quarter. Up towards half forward. Ralph caught behind. Howard couldn't take the mark. Morrissey gets it to Byrne. Byrne on the right foot. Looking down there for James Bennett. He's got it. He's in all sorts of trouble. Gets in the hand pass to Abbott. Abbott finds Ede. But the mark has been... Oh, he was off. He I was think off. he was off Perovic. And the umpire's letting him have the benefit of the doubt. So, Val Perovic is so take it on centre wing. A couple of the Hawks boys not too happy about that decision. They felt he was off. I think Perra knew he was off, but he conned 
Down towards the half forward line. Abbott again. Play on is the call. That ball obviously touched. Perovic again. Couldn't take it this time. Jones. And this time uh, the free kick goes against Perovic to be taken by Curran. It's on centre wing. The Hawks wanting a score. Got a loose player down on that half forward line. It's Michael Gertz. Gertz fires in towards goal. Plenty of flyers. Bortolotto up too high. Fisted it away. But the free kick went against Bacanara for a push. He went up very early. That was a perfect chance when uh, Michael Gertz had that ball for someone to lead to that space or that hole that Don talks about so often. And no one led. They just kicked it up in the air and that made it easy for the Carlton backmen. Now, they had plenty of space to run to and it could have been a nice, easy goal, but they didn't bother to lead. Wow, Jones, beaten by Deere, but it's grabbed there by Nixon. Nixon towards half back to Marku. Gets in the hand pass, but beautifully intercepted by Paul Abbott. He goes for a long kick, nights from behind. But uh, not good enough because there were two or three Carlton players. There's uh, Shane Robertson getting a left foot kick up towards uh, Abbott, who takes a bit. Oh, boy. Bit stiff there. That looked like a mark to me. I thought he was the only man who touched Paul Abbott. And Colin Robertson saying exactly that to the umpire, and he's copying a warning. And Robertson doesn't want to go on with it. <laughs> but he's telling the umpire he was wrong, and I agree, he was wrong. As we see, Deer. Oh, his danger because Mark has got it. He gets away from Whitman. He hooks it back. But waiting there, and this one will be paid to Paul Abbott as he marks it on his chest. Half back flank. Short pass. Finds Robertson. Colin Robertson has won a Norm Smith medal, I feel, for best player in a grand final. Oh. He gets it. There's Muller. She can take a grab. Ian Muller. Yes, he's in the centre of the ground. Chance to put the Blues forward once again. The drop punt on its way. Down towards Warren Ralph at the back. Howard. An intelligent handball. Getting it away to Morrissey, who just clears up towards centre wing. Or oh dear, perhaps a little too casually on that occasion. Taken by Hartney. Kicking into a nest of Hawthorne players there, however. And it's Robertson who takes the mark. I think that's why Brendan Hartney's not in the seniors. That was a terrible kick. He was loose. He could have done a nice low pass to his man who was in front. He kicked it straight up in the air, as you've called it, Sandy, to the Hawthorne players. As we see a chance for Mick Kennedy, who's playing well now, down towards Robertson, who smothered that beautifully. Oh, There's a 30-metre hand pass to Greg Deere. That's great play. Down to McGrath. McGrath trying to crash his way through. Ran into a brick wall. Mick Kennedy... Oh, good football. There's English. A hurry kick. Up towards Scott Howell. Taken away beautifully by Morrissey. Morrissey to weed. Here's a chance for Hawthorne. He shot pass. Malaxos. Oh, free kick, was it? No. No. Oh, boy, I think I would have played that. He had no hope of marking it. The player ran right at him. As we see, Curly Austin brings it back to Hannah. Gee, that was bad luck there to Malaxos. They're not too happy about it. There's Gagan. Neil Gagan's been an outstanding player today. On the left foot, beautiful pass up towards McKenzie. McKenzie on half forward. He brings it up towards Ralph. Ah, oh, interference. A free kick to Ralph. Bad play, Glenn Howard. The ball was about 15 metres away. He, he was worried about Ralph. He hipped him out. What's this? Just see this on route. Oh. oh, you can't do that to a player. Ralph's kicking ability. He's 40 metres out from goal. 40 to 45 metres. And he has kicked four goals already. Let's see what he can do here. Carlton's lead at the moment, 10 points. Ralph with a drop punt. Going across the face of goal and never really deviating at all. So one behind the result of the margin now, 11 points. Well, Carlton give the impression now they're just about to go on with the game. Hawthorne seem to be running out of legs. Byrne back into play. Powell waiting down Kennedy smothered off the boot or the pressure that was applied to him caused him to kick it off the side of the boot and out of bounds on the fall the hooks certainly not out of it yet they're going to go deep into attack again Gertz the opportunity up towards the left half forward flank Bacanara looking for the free kick for holding it didn't come his way and now it's with Val Perovic caught slips on the ground play on is the call Curran gets the handball across to Sullivan he's clear steady fires at goal it goes across the face of goal 
and 1.0. Well, they've had chances in this quarter to get up with Carlton, but they've missed them. 10-8 Carlton, 8-10 Hawthorne, 68 plays 58, 10 points the difference. There's Gary Buckenara. He is the only player with a black armband on, so there must be a personal reason for that. We don't know what it is as we see Curly Austin bring it towards Peravic, who flies, and that's the Val Peravic of old. As up he went and took a one grab screamer at half back. Let's see what he can do. Here it is again in replay. Down towards the wing now. Carlton go into attack once again. But again, Mackenzie has the ball well fisted away by Byrne. Yes, well, Byrne has been playing exceptionally well. The other player that has played well and hasn't had much is young Flintoff. Flintoff's been on Mark Hugh, and that is the reason why Mark Hugh hasn't been playing terribly well. Here's the throw in. And the same procedure will take place again. I thought I noticed that uh, McBurn also wearing an armband on Let's have a look. the left yes. arm. So it's only a couple of the Hawthorne players have got them. I'd say most haven't. As we see Byrne bring it towards half-back. Robertson, uh, English, has been a good player in this quarter. As he goes for the long kick, Ralph ducks back. Oh, good mark. Had his name written all over. It'll be a 15-metre penalty, which will take him right onto the line. And this will be a soda. For, have a look at this in replay. Read it beautifully, Don, didn't he? He kept his eye on the ball the whole time there. Byrne just coming in, giving him the elbow behind the ear. If you're going to do that, you've got to make them count, don't you, Peter? Well, it's a chance to make the margin 16 points. He's done it. 11-8, plays 8-10 on the seven sports scoreboard. Well, Warren Ralph has been an outstanding player today. He's played in front, he's led for the ball, he's got back and gone for his marks, and, uh, well, that's how he can play the game, uh, Warren Ralph, and uh, he's made the difference having a forward firing like that up there has made a big difference to this game. As we see Mark Koo, there's Flintoff, his shadow, grabbed him when he didn't have the ball, but I agree with Don. Flintoff done an excellent job picking up Mark Koo today, as we see... So Desmar has given a lot of thought to this game. Uh, Byrne on to McKenzie and Flintoff on the marker. There's uh, Marcusani off the ground. He's just come back on the ground, Frank Marcusani, uh, in place of Millen Hanna, and he kicked that off the ground and threw for a point. Hawthorne have gone for a little more speed on the forward line. Uh, McGrath's off, who hasn't had a good day, and Patrick Bailey's come on. Well, there's Morrissey, thumped away. Back it comes to Alex Marku. Look at the pace of Marku, but he can't... Keep the ball in and he is forced to the line and over the line. Half forward flank for Carlton. They're looking very, very good in this quarter. Their number 52 is Neil Gagan, who's been, in my opinion, their best player. He and Warren Ralph up towards Ralph. Oh, oh. this is bounce and the wrong side of the post and through for one point. But Carlton Don getting right on top. Well, they are now. It's not a question. I mentioned earlier legs. Legs is usually a, a case of uh, fitness, but this, this is not the case. It's just a case of class, and the Hawthorne players are trying desperately hard. Three goals, the difference in favour of Carlton. English has been... He's been a very good player and almost took that mark. Considine can't get away with it. There's Muller getting it into Robertson. Shane Robertson. Hand passes back to Nixon. Nixon to Perovic. Touch of the fumbles by Val. In goes uh, Nixon to lend a hand again. But the ball will be bounced on centre wing with the scoreboard showing Carlton 11-10, leading Hawthorne 8-10. But the game, the way it's played, Peter, it's only three goals and Hawthorne could get a run on and be right back in it. Here's the bounce. The hurried kick by Shane Robertson. The goal earlier on in this term. Straight up and down. So he has another go. Longer this time. Fisted away. McKenzie is there. Ralph does well. Gets the handball clear. Here's an opportunity now for Burke. Onto the left foot he goes. The bounce will it come round. Morrissey is there. With him is Marcazzani. Turns around, swings at goal and puts it through. So Frank Marcazzani spending a considerable amount of time on the interchange bench, coming off it and posting the Blues' 12th goal, and here's how he did it. Well, there's Rowan Burke swinging onto the left foot, and Morrissey just didn't get the run of the ball, and it really wasn't... I don't know, I think the umpire was right there. He did yes. push him in the side. No, that's what I'm saying. It was clever play by Marcus Arnie. He just gave him a little nudge to put him off balance, 
get the ball on his side and then hook it through. So, uh, well, he's been off the ground for a while. I don't think they were pleased uh, the way he was going. Uh, Colin Kinnear, the coach. Des Mara, of course, coaching Hawthorne. Now, this player's come right into the game, uh, Shane Robertson. Half forward. It's grabbed there by Burke. Burke to Mark Asani. Can't take the mark. Oh, good use of the body there. That's grabbed by Neil Gagan. Onto the left foot he goes. Tries to hook it back, but puts it out of bounds on the full. But, gee, he hasn't let them down today. He's been a great player. 19 kicks, Peter. Well, I'm not surprised, but not only has he had 19 kicks, he's done a lot of heavy shepherding and uh, he hasn't gets the ball, doesn't he? Has, does he ever? And uh, well, in my opinion, he's the best man on the ground. This player has had an outstanding quarter. This English, seven kicks this quarter, and uh, well, he's made a big difference since being moved to the forward line in that second quarter. English the right foot floating punt. Oh, it's going to drop short. Who's waiting down? Shine was there, couldn't take it. The hurry kick is by Robertson back towards the half back line. Nixon unable to take the mark. Fisted forward by Sullivan. English was there once again. But it's Sullivan who's followed play down and will sneak over centre wing now with one bounce. Mark who giving chase, but he's too quick. Knights well, takes it. Better. And can kick into a vacant square at the moment if he lets fly with one. He does a spiralling torpedo punt kick, but it's off target. And one point only goes on the ball. Well, they want a couple of quick goals, the Hawks. But what they've got to do, uh, see Peter Knight's led from about 30 metres out and end up getting it about 60 metres out. You've got to lead from the goal square and uh, try and get it within kicking distance. That's what they're not doing enough of. As we see Paul Considine take this mark, a good mark over the top of Mick Kennedy. He brings it towards uh, Knight who flies from the centre of the pack. He had first grab, that's a mark. Gee, I thought he had first grab and second grab. Well, he's given it to him. Free kick. I there wonder if that's the evening, Peter. I'd love to have a look at we'll that in that replay. replay have here. a look, see if it's a mark. Oh, oh I thought actually, oh, you're right. you could have paid it. Yes. I wasn't so sure in the replay, though. I thought definitely the first time, but... Uh, I thought he got his hands yeah, to it. Tried to pat it too. down. And, uh, oh, it doesn't matter now. He's got the free kick in the same spot. Right in front. He's kicked one. He stabs at this one. And I think it's a goal. It is. Well, it's a much-needed goal by Hawthorne. That's Knight's second goal, and they need a number of others. A score 12, 10, 80, Carlton going ahead. Hawthorne, 9, 11, 65. We'll just see here on replay as Considine shoots a high ball up. Knights, you can see Knights with the blonde hair there, pushes the opponent out. Actually, he did get his hands to the yes, ball I first, I think. Yeah. So Peter Knights now with two goals to his credit. The Hawks only want a couple more, and they're right back in business for what should be a great last quarter of grand final footy. Here's the centre bounce, and another infringement out of the square. It's going to go against Carlton. That's well, this is their chance. Bad, isn't it? It's, yeah, that, you can't I think that, that. that would really annoy coaches, oh. I would feel. Dear, dangerous time of the quarter. Knights gets in front, couldn't take the mark. Now the Carlton defence, led by Kenny, try to clear it out. Caught underneath and ping for holding the ball was Shane Roberts. The umpire was sick. Uh, Rick Kennedy. Well, the umpire was saying, umpire Hallett, that he made no attempt to get it out. And they've been very consistent on that today, that if you lie on top of the ball, you've got to make an attempt to knock the ball out. And that's a uh, good umpiring to be so consistent. Now, Malaxos is probably too far out, I think, Sandy, to... He should be able to put it up for the high flyers here. Yes, he won't make the distance. Now, let's see who can take the mark. Um, Perovic was in front. Strong Carlton defence. Now there is Abbott now going in after it. Right into a brick wall. Bacanara gets it out to Considine who has a flying shot on the left foot but puts it through for one point. Four minutes of time on play. 12-10. Plays 9-12 favouring the Blues. Short to Nixon. Nixon finding Gagan. Here's kick number 20 coming up. And look at the depth he gets into his kicks as well. Down towards Muller, waiting down is Burke. Burke firing up towards McKenzie on the half forward line. Can he pick it up? He tries to tap it back. Cleverly does so too. Good support down towards Howard. Miss handling there, but he's able to recover. Keeps the ball in play. Gets a kick away down towards the half back line. Rocket Rodney Ead has snuck away to take that mark. Drift play up towards the wing, but there's the siren. It's three quarter time in the Army Reserve Cup. And it's set for a big last quarter with Carlton 12-10, 82. 
leading Hawthorne 9-12-66. Quarter time in the Army Reserve Cup Grand Final. Carlton, a four-goal quarter. In fact, they're off target. They kicked 4-6 to advance to 12 goals, 10-82. Hawthorne kicked two goals, six, so they too missed some easy ones. They're on 9-12-66, but they've got a margin of 16 points to make up. Well, there is just part of the sellout crowd here at the MCG for the third successive confrontation between Essendon and the Hawks. That's what it looks like from there. But the King of the Airwaves has joined us in the Channel 7 News helicopter to give us an even better bird's eye view. Welcome to our coverage, Norm Beeman. Thanks very much, Sandy. Well, the situation has changed uh, quite markedly since our earlier report. The stands uh, are filling quite rapidly at this time. However, still quite a few areas left to fill. And evidence uh, of queuing outside of the ground However, they're not uh, inordinately long. Car parking around the MCG now appears to be at a premium. Still a few spots available over around Olympic Park. But remarkably, Sandy, still no evidence of any traffic jams around the big arena. I uh, no doubt that a lot of people took advantage or took the advice of the Met and have caught many of the extra trains that were made available for this big day. I've no doubt that uh, after the big game, Sandy, the traffic situation around the MCG might change quite dramatically and it might take uh, people some considerable time to get home. We'll be back with you later, but that at the moment is the scene above the MCG. And back to you, Sandy. Right, thank you, Norm. And there is a shot of Norm in our Channel 7 helicopter, and I know that Norm would be appreciating. Only the light winds that are blowing at the moment. And there is the crowd that he was talking about. It is starting to build up, but of course those people that do have reserved seats and have their tickets well and truly in their grasp will uh, certainly not come down until uh, they feel it absolutely necessary. For those people still to make their way down, it is somewhat cool here. Cool but overcast, but I would be inclined uh, to bring a jumper and coat. Well, let's have a look now at some of the highlights. Well, here's young McGrath on the screen there. Taps the ball out well across to Sullivan. Sullivan set it up to that man again, Bacanara and Bacanara went in and kicked his only goal for the quarter. In fact, that was his fourth goal for the game. And here was Byrne. I thought this was a bad hit out by Byrne. Should have hit it towards goal. And Robson, the ball really may have, he may have put it on the half volley and uh, kicked with his left foot. And there's another one from uh, Gagan. Gagan dribbled along the ground to Marku. marku has been well held by uh, Flintoff. And actually, he did get away a little bit in that third quarter. But marku has got to do a lot more. This was bad play, I believe, by Ede here. He chipped the ball just that little too high and really didn't give Malaxos much of a chance with the players bearing down. Had he have kicked it a little lower, I think, uh, and uh, would have allowed uh, Malaxos to get it. English played very well on the half forward flank that quarter, moved there halfway through the quarter. A good kick, found Ralph. Ralph was the only foot one, keeping his eye on the ball. And Byrne gave away a 15-metre penalty there with his elbow behind the ear. Here again, Ralph. A long handball out. Rowan Burke had just come onto the ground, and this is the bad bounce. Caught Morrissey out, and Marcus Arney, who I'd, was replaced, I think, with a head injury in the first quarter, came back on, nudged him out, and kicked his first goal. Knights, well, we believe that was a mark in the first instance, but the umpire deemed it around the net. Right, there we are. Highlights of the game so far. We are set to go for a thrilling last quarter. Carlton leading 82, Hawthorne 66, a margin of 16 points. Can the Hawks get the first score on the board and really make a game of this? Hal beaten for it in the middle, but can they take it out of the centre? Sullivan trapped, gets clear, gets a hurried kick down towards James Bennett. The bounce is not good for him. English steals it, goes high over his shoulder towards Muller. He can't take the mark, could have almost given away the free kick, and in fact has. So, James Morrissey to the half forward line no mark taken by Bacanara that was his target well played by Kenny he's had a pretty good game too Muller will fly from behind unable to take the mark Curran the opportunity now for the Hawks gets caught and well and truly caught misunderstanding there between Morrissey and Deer Marku gets caught pinged holding the ball they didn't give Marku much of a chance in the umpires had a quiet first half 
but it's come into it in the third quarter as Curran goes out towards Ede, who goes longer to Bacanara, used the body oh, beautifully, right. and then took a great mark. You called it, Sandy. That was great use of the body. He nudged his opponent under there, and he must have quite quite a lot of strength for his size because he did hold Kenny out. And Kenny has been a good player, but obviously that's the way he prefers to lead his players under the under the ball and then duck back. A chance to make the margin only 10 points. Let's see what he can do with the drop punt. Looks pretty good off the boot. It's all clear. They're back in business, the Hawks. Well, Hawthorne really did need that particular goal. I, they started well. Deer got the first hit out down to Sullivan, but I, know, I thought it was an insipid effort by Bennett. And uh, here's E looking for Buccaneer, and Buccaneer has played an exceptional game today. Oh. An exceptional game. I suppose he'd be rivaled by Gagan, who's probably the best on the ground. Well, that was a clever little uh, nudge out there. A beautiful camera shot. The close-up one of that, and you can see Gary Buccaneer's great experience and ability to nudge his opponent under it. As we see, Morris, Morris he gets it down towards half forward Gagan. Nearly lost that one. He has lost it now as uh, Flintoff nearly copped one. Way on to the umpire is uh, Abbott off the side of the boot. Robertson knocks it away. Michael Gertz has got it. Can the Hawks come back? They're only 10 points behind at the moment. The next goal is vital to this game as we see Rodney eat a beautiful hand pass out to Malaxos. Malaxos kicks it oh. high. Buccaneer! Oh! oh boy, what about that for a mark? Gary Buccaneer has got the ride. Had his name written all over it. Have a look at this in replay. I was just critical of Buccaneer then because he was a long way behind his opponent, but this fellow has got that touch of class. You know, I said earlier there was a horse that won the Olympic gold medal called Touch of Class, and he's not bad, this fellow. Going for goal number six. He's got it, and back come Hawthorne. Well, that is the best mark we have seen ever in the Armour Reserve, ever. Yes, and that's I'd a big so. statement to make, but... That was a classic, and look at it here. He's been doing it all day, and he really did get the right. Kenny did the right thing. He played him in front, and that was a real pressure kick. Of course, the question will arise, Why was should he it? have been played in the first? You know, well, we'll only no. know at the end of the day, of course, but, uh, well, he's looked all right today. And well, now, he has, but he's not quick enough, game. Peter. Let's not fight. You know, we can't elude ourselves with that problem. <laughs> oh, thanks, once again. <laughs> Now, let's see who takes it out of the middle this time. They're running hot. James Bennett gets the handball away. It's taken by Chris Whitman. Whitman's kicked down towards Knights. But, as you can hear, the desk being thumped by Don Scott. It was Curly Austin who used the body well out. Wide to Gagan. Long to Burke. Burke's almost up to the wing. Chasing him is Rodney E. But he gets his kick in time. Out towards English. Close to the boundary line and sees it's a it over the line. It's a frustrating thing when players further up the ground and Knights really, I believe, could have made a better fist of that. Throw in. Four-minute mark. Final term. Four points in it. Favouring Carlton. Burn gets the handball away. Now here's a chance for Michael Gertz. Receives on centre wing. Gets a hurried long kick down towards Bailey. But uh, it goes over the line. It was too wide. Out of bounds on the full. So Mario Bortolotto will take the kick. Yes, Bortolotto on half-back flank. Terrific game. We've got on our hands now with four points the difference in favour of the Blues. 82 plays 78. It, when it looked like Carlton were going to run away with it, Hawthorne have fought back as we see Greg Deere. Oh, Jagan almost took the mark. Here we see James Bennett. Oh, Bacanara. Sullivan, Knights, goal! Hawthorne hit the front by two points. Is he going to get another kick? No. It's a goal. Actually, though, football's a funny game. I was just thinking, what can Hawthorne do? And the, the thing I thought was take James Bennett off the ground. But that, as soon as you think, as he initiated the play, it was good play by Bennett, number 18. Across again to that Buccaneer, and Buccaneer is Sullivan, and Sullivan to Knights. Could this be an omen for what's to follow? Peter Knights has three goals. Gary Buccaneer, six. From the centre bounce, Howell wins it, but they've had trouble taking it out of the middle. A hurried kick gathers no distance at all. Past Marcazani it goes. Sullivan lost it. Holds it underneath himself. 
and the umpire comes in and decides upon a bounce. What a thriller. Hawthorne leading by two points. What would you do in Carlton's situation now, Peter? Well, I think some of their players have got to really go in and get the hard ball because uh, they're leaving it to too few at the moment. Hawthorne want the ball a lot more. You wouldn't more... employ the old Collingwood tactic. Oh, I'd like to know what that is. We'll ask you in a moment what it is. Here's Greg Deere. Centre of the ground. He kicks wide. He's looking for Bennett. James Bennett. Outstretched oh, hands. Oh, He's oh. marked it as Don wanted him up the ground. And Bennett's were playing well. But oh. Oh. oh, boy. What about that for another mark? As Bacanara set his sights on it. Up he went for another screamer. Have a look at this. Oh, as Rod Stewart said, a picture tells a thousand stories. That was magnificent. Here he is lining up. Well, he is winning this goal. game off his Every own pick... boot at the moment. He has kicked six goals already. This will be seven if he kicks it. Yes, it's a goal. And the Hawks move further in front. What a turnaround. Hawthorne leading by 12 points. And they go into attack again. Down to the half forward line. Out comes Knights. Can't take... Is he got yes. it? Yes. He's got it. Well, well, he may have lost it, but he's obviously juggled it. Let's have a look at it. There's the mark. He does hold it. But Rowan Burke, at number 19 there, has gone down to pick up Bacanari. He went straight. That was a magnificent yeah. mark. Don't, don't just gloss over it. That was a magnificent mark. Oh, I don't know whether it was a magnificent. It, it was. was. A, it Did was you see the way he butted up? It was a good mark. Let's see what uh, he can do, gentlemen. Here's the kick. Floating a punt kick across the face of goal. And at the one point only. Well, Gary Bacanara has turned defeat into what at the moment appears to be victory for the uh, Hawks. Well, Rowan Burke, number 19, has gone down on him. As soon as he ran on him, he ran straight into Bacanara. There he is, and Bacanara grabbed him by the hair as if to say, well, listen, son, you're going to have to do a bit better than that if you're going to beat me, as we see Peter Knight Your starting to come kick. good with a great mark out on the half-forward line. Now, I wonder if he's been switched from full forward as he kicks it towards the pocket. Who's there? Abbott has it punched away. Ricky Nixon, oh, Carlton under all sorts of pressure at the moment. Hawthorne have really lifted their rating. Carlton were doing it easily in that third quarter. And, uh, well, everyone thought how far Carlton, but the Hawks have hit back, and Buckingham has been sensational. We've played just over eight and a half minutes of this final turn. There's still plenty of time left for either side. How? And eventually over the line. 82 plays 91. Nine points the margin. How takes it out of the air, gets a hurried kick. Who's underneath oh. it? Oh. Standing his ground was Steve Malaxos. Was that courageous or what? And we've seen a couple of courageous efforts here. But I'm watching isn't it Burke and Buccanar at the moment, keeping a close eye on one another. Malaxos is going to have a shot. He's going to go deep into the square. Let's see what he can do. He's not a long kick of a football. Centres it. Powell comes over the top with a mighty fist. Taken by James Bennett. Throws it out the back door. The hurried snap is by Abbott. I think he's kicked it. The big fella's kicked it. Oh, they're running hot. 14-13. Carlton have stopped on 12-10. That's exactly what they were at three-quarter time. Well, things certainly could work your way when the ball's running for you. And we see it on replay. Bennett gets it out, and Abbott screws it back over his head for his left foot. And, of course, Don Scott, if it was coaching, would have taken oh, Bennett off. I would have he? taken him off earlier than that, Peter. And he's, uh, well, you never know with football. Uh, players can really lift all of a sudden. Here comes Bennett again. Oh, Bacanara beautifully to Bennett. Into the open goal, he wanted the handball, but he elects to have a kick instead and slams it through. What great play, Bacanara again. Oh boy, let's have a look at that. Let's hope we can see that in replay again because for Bacanara, you watch this from the centre bounce, Dot. Well, it started by Young Whitman there, gets the left foot out, and uh, Bennett ran past Bacanara. Terrific play. Bennett was in two minds here with to put it over to Knights, but Knights told him to kick the goal, and that was well done, and Hawthorne are hot. Well, this is a magnificent exhibition. There's Rowan Burke, as we see, back to the centre of the ground. What's happening now? New ball, Peter. New ball, and 12-10, uh, plays 15-13. Carlton, three goals, three behind. Well, who would have thought this at three-quarter time? 
82 plays 103. We've been playing just over 11 minutes into this final quarter. It's been a great performance by Hawthorne in this final quarter. Bacanara, we saw those great marks. We've seen the tap-ons, a lovely hand pass. He's winning the game off his own boot. As we see Marku, maybe Carlton can fight back. Alex Marku, open goal. Warren Rolfe hasn't seen much of the football in this quarter. They haven't been able to get it down to him. And uh, the ball beats him over the line and out of bounds. There he is, Warren. He's been an excellent player. There's the Hawthorne bench. The man with the phone is Desmar, the champion wingman of days gone by. He would be delighted with this performance by the Hawks. Well, forward pocket for Carlton. They badly want a couple of quick goals because at the moment, Hawthorne are well on top. Burn. Grab there by Shine. Back towards full forward. Morrissey. A mark. Over to Gertz. Gertz has got Malaxos. He elects to go for the kick instead. Bailey against Bordelotto. Now, Bailey, if he gets clear, he would have had too much pace, but Bordelotto hung on to him, and the free kick will come back to half-back flank where the mark, where the free kick will be taken by young uh, Patrick Bailey. Bordelotto didn't have much chance there, Peter. I mean, he had to give the left free kick away because he was gone. There was an open space in front. Uh, centre wing area. There's Patrick Bailey, number 33. Started today on interchange. Scoreboard, Carlton 12-10. Hawthorne 15-13. Three goals, three the difference. And Hawthorne were on one of the few sides to defeat Carlton in a home and away game this year, of course. And uh, they look like they might do it in the important one of the year. Still on the outer side of the ground, but still plenty of time left. We're in the 13th minute. Here's the bounce. Hawthorne coming home full of steam. That kick wide, out of bounds on the full, so the Blues will get another opportunity. But they need everyone they can get at the moment. It's Mario Bortolotto from the half-back line going up towards the right half-forward flank. No mark is taken. Whitman goes over the top and gives away a free kick, and it will be taken by Shine. He drifts play in towards the pocket. And a good mark taken by Morris. He all plays on straight away. Hawthorne really looking the goods at the moment as he comes steaming out from the back pocket, almost down to the centre. Kicks towards Bacanara. Beaten on this occasion. Bortolotto's handball goes astray to Abbott. Abbott across to Bennett. Bennett fires in towards goal and puts through another one. And that could be the... Back for the centre bounce once again. 109 plays 82. 14 and a half minutes played. From the centre bounce, Carlton want goals and want them desperately. What a fighting effort it's been by the Hawks in this last term. Yes, a magnificent performance by this by Hawthorne. I don't think at three-quarter time anyone gave them really much hope of beating the Carlton side who are getting well on top. There's Mick Kennedy down towards half forward. The mark has been taken down there. Playing on is Whitman. Whitman up towards half forward where the mark has been taken by Abbott. Abbott breaks away. Short pass towards the pocket. Patrick Bailey. He breaks away now onto the left foot. He fires at the goals and hooks it and out of bounds on the full. The move of uh, Abbott up into the forward line and Curran to, well, it's more or less just a change over centre half back, centre half forward has definitely had an influence, Peter. Yes, and uh, here's Rowan Burke on screen. Bringing it towards the half-back line. Greg Deer. Should have punched it. Deer towards the pocket. Bailey, young Patrick Bailey. Over the back is Bacanara. Oh, the ball shoveled out to Bacanara. Is this goal number eight? He fires. Yes, what a performance. Eight goals to Gary Bacanara. Oh, boy. I think he's telling those senior selectors, you should have picked me. Well, Bacanara's kicked four goals in this quarter. And again, Deer across. Young Bailey, uh, Patrick Bailey didn't uh, follow it up well by Sullivan. Sullivan who definitely is a grafter and does get underneath the packs and shot the handball out to Bacanara. And that's his fourth goal for the quarter and his eighth for the game. And give a rap too. I, I think I agree with you there. The young Sullivan, he's been doing a lot of heavy work today, Don, especially early when the, the game can be... Uh, made or broken in that uh, early part of the game. 
the chance for the Blues to go forward now down towards their spearhead in Warren Ralph and he takes the mark but they've got a long long way to go although Ralph has kicked five the Blues trail by more than five is Ralph with an easy approach but that one drifting off the side of the boot and one point only so everything going right for the Hawks not a lot going correctly for the Blues Howard back into play ball to ground once getting maximum distance Marcus Arnie trying to affect the spoil over the top kicking under pressure was David Flintoff and that ball goes out of bounds on the full well Flintoff certainly done his job today he has uh, played on Alex Mark Koo. you would think under these conditions Mark Koo would be a dominant player Don the other stopper too I think you've got to mention Byrne on McKenzie I haven't seen yeah. McKenzie McKenzie they've relied entirely on Ralph they had two kicks Warren McKenzie well they would have thought he'd be nearly be the match winner today I, I think as we see Michael Gertz get it back to David Sullivan it's in the center of the ground or oh, Carlton desperately trying to get it out. Oh, Rodney E just takes it away over to Considine. Considine on the left foot up towards half point. Now here's James Bennett. He's had a brilliant quarter. He knocks it on. He's on the oh, Bucadar is calling for it. He ducks back. Wasn't a good kick, but the bounce should favour Curly Austin. There's Bucadar in there again. Oh, tunnel balled out. In they go after it in that forward pocket. Paul Considine is on the bottom of the pack, and the bounce will take place. There is a tie, but no doubt pretty happy. Paul Considine wearing the number 36 Guernsey for the Hawks. It's in their attacking zone once again, Abbott and McKenzie. The hurried kick for Carlton was by Kennedy. No mark taken, waiting at the back is Big Mick Byrne. Goes long, Peter Knight's the target. Coming over the top, trying to spoil was Austin. Unsuccessful, Knight's onto the right boot, he fires, I reckon he's goal. Hawthorne 18-13, 121, steaming all over Carlton. 12-11-83 from the centre bounce once again. The Blues desperate to go into a fence, but they're going to be beaten by time now. Here's an opportunity for Shine. He could have a shot here with a left foot drop punt. Goes into full forward and posts one. But it's all too late, even though we're only at the 19 and a half minute mark. They trail by five goals to 18-13 to 13-11. Well, that really didn't deserve it. I should have received more recognition. Nick uh, Robson gets it out. And Shine, this was a good kick by Shine because he's on his wrong foot and he's quite a way out on an angle. He looked there, saw Ralph was well out from goal, then decided to kick it himself. And that was a good goal. 89 plays 121. 32 points the margin. And light rain is starting to fall here at the MCG. Light rain falling. Malaxos wins it out of the centre, down towards Bailey, and he takes it in front of English. Going short, just chipping up towards that right half forward line because Considine had drifted down into the flank. Now Bacanara saying, head goalwards. And that's what he's going to do. We've got Bacanara and Burke up there in the square using the torpedo punt kick it's high a, not a bad looking kick either but just off target 1.0 well if you're halfway through that third quarter i thought that hawthorne just didn't have the class of the carlton side but... right and uh well don't ever ask us to predict again because you would have sworn halfway through that third quarter as don said that carlton were going to go on and win it but this has been a top performance there's Curran slipping over a really top performance by the Hawthorne side. It's been a real team effort as we see Alex Marku keep it in play. Hooks it back towards the uh, wing area. Michael Byrne, beautiful use of the body and duck back to take the mark. And he's been, played a very disciplined game on Warren McKenzie today as he kicks it towards the pocket. Up they go. It's uh, knocked away from Muller into the hands of Marku. Marku up towards half forward. Morrissey flew. Over the back is Colin Robertson. Great pace as he gets away. Goes for the short one towards the centre of the ground. He finds Patrick Bailey. Bailey across to Greg Deere. Deere breaks away. He's been a good player in this quarter also. Up towards the forward pocket. Here's Sullivan. David Sullivan on the left foot. Hooks it back towards the pocket. The ball bounces. Hartney's there. He's got it. Oh, the Carlton players look very tired as Hartney brings it out towards the half-back line where we see Michael Gertz run the ball over the line. Almost 22 minutes played, final term. And the Hawks looking 
to make it two in a row have certainly got this one parceled up. What a marvellous result it would be for the club if they could take not only the reserves but also the seniors. But there's a team called Essendon that's going to have a say in the seniors. Carlton now. On the half-back line, a put forward by Kenny, up towards the half-forward flank. Ralph, under plenty of pressure, couldn't take it. Malaxos is clear. Punts it back towards the wing. Bacanara gets taken out of it. Illegal shepherding, said the umpire. And Gary Bacanara. Well, Burke just took his eye off the ball then and ran straight at Bacanara. And uh, although Muller took the mark, infringement against Burke. Here's the kick. Not well direct on that occasion. The torpedo just spiralling straight down into that position and once again Carlton are able to drift it back towards the wing Curran is there however back to Bacanara again just chips in oh. towards half forward he had two players there Considine or Whitman and picked Considine yeah, that's a sign of a sign of real football ability the way he was able to control that well, he's kick quick with in a, the head isn't he Peter? real little chip shot he certainly is his Knights in front hipped out Curly Austin goes in. Is it his, I would say for certain, this would be his last game for Carlton. Rod Austin, he's been a tremendous player. Congratulations too to Rod on a tremendous career as we see Ian Muller on half-back flank. Bring it towards half-forward. Hannah caught behind, and he's played a good quarter, Morris. He's taken a couple of lovely marks. He's got 15 metres here too. Peter Carey is the umpire. Morrissey. Towards half forward, Peravic has the ball knocked away. Des English is there. Hand pass to Nixon. Nixon on the left foot. Greg Deer sets himself. Can't take the mark. Hannah was there. I think he was grabbed Millen Hannah. He was. Oh, he played. He must have played the advantage as he gives it to Marcus and He goes to Ralph. Ralph marks. Bang. Goal. And is that number six? Goal number six to Warren Ralph. Warren Rolfe definitely is their focal point up forward, and he is a good player, and that was evidenced again by the way that he kicked that. He dropped that across his boot, and he was running it, and here it is on replay, we'll see it all here. As Mark Azani kicked long, and Ralph, not that far out from goal, twisted, put the ball across his boot, check side kick, as Sandy would say. It's a great camera shot, that head-on shot there, and a little check side kick as he put it through for a goal. But he's played a terrific game, Warren Rolfe, down the other end. Don't let's, they haven't been able to get it to him enough in this quarter. He's capitalised up forward. He's been easily their best forward, and especially with uh, Warren McKenzie down today. They've needed him. Robertson on the left foot, up towards half forward. There's uh, Gertz, has it knocked away. Oh, here they come, the Hawks. They're running in droves as we see Ede go to the boundary line. Bailey was there, but they couldn't keep it in play. And at the 25-minute mark of this final quarter, Hawthorne lead 18-14 to Carlton 14-11. Throw in. So though we could be in for a couple of very light showers, certainly no heavy rain. Down towards Ralph again. Can't quite take it at the first grab. Claimed by Howard. And they're starting to work in a line now as Byrne drifts it back into the centre and the mark taken for Hawthorne by Considine. Well, it's been a great team effort, particularly in this last quarter by Hawthorne. Although it's been capped off up forward by Bacanara and Knights. This is Sullivan. Down towards full forward once again, and now Abbott gets in the act. <laughs> well, they're Gee, coming from everywhere. They're all firing. He has kicked one goal. Very good overhead, uh, Paul Abbott. Very, very good mark, and... Uh, Took a ripper mark just a moment ago for a goal, and uh, well, let's see what he can do with this one. But they've had a terrific quarter. He's offline and through for one point. But it's not going to matter much at this stage because we've been playing just over 26 minutes for this final quarter, and 95 plays 123 in favour of Hawthorne. They've had a nine-goal quarter, Peter. Oh, what fancy doing that in the grand final? And uh, too late now, Ricky. I think they'll be wrestling and. Having a well, you've only got a point up to the scoreboard, don't you? Yes, well, that look tells at the, the story. At the bottom <laughs> There's the Aaron. man. Eight goals to his credit. What's his stats, uh, Kevin? Eight marks and 15 kicks and eight goals to Bacanara Sandy. Fine performance indeed. There's Abbott again, finishing off the game extremely well. From the half back line, he gets away from Milan Hanna. 
in towards the centre. Over the head of Gertz it goes. Sullivan was there. Burke couldn't take it. Back with Gertz again. No one able to get it away effectively. Now Whoa. they're having a bit of a box on. Gee. Brett Baines back on the ground. See, they haven't given him much of a go today, Tom. Well, I, I, I'm very disappointed. I think they should have been playing him all the time. He's hardly had a run at all. Well, here he is in action now. A solo effort straight to Marcazzani, who gets his kick down towards the half forward line. Morris, he almost juggled a one-hander. Abbott, Hannah tries to bottle it up. Does so too on that uh, right half forward flank. And we'll see another bounce. 123 plays 95. And a very, very fine win indeed to Hawthorne. Coming up. We're in the 28th minute now. There won't be a great deal of time on. There'll be a bit because we've seen some 11 goals scored for the term. But no injuries or time wasting to speak of. Still in the centre. Hartley puts it out wide. Gertz will be first to it. Marku giving chase. Gertz has Malaxos there if he needs him. And he is going to need him. Malaxos keeps it in play, play, gets the effective handball away to Considine. They've got the loose man on the outer side of the ground there now. And an opportunity for Ellingworth to put them up towards uh, Robertson. His handball was a little too lightning on that occasion. Bennett is there, however. James Bennett steadies, fires in towards full forward. Bacanara getting back on it. And he's not got it. Oh, he should have One point that, only. Well, he, two grabs. Oh, I thought he had his name taken. written all over it, Don. Well, the way he's playing, we'll see What's it on this? replay here. Actually, it was just hit away by Burke, just on the second attempt there. And Actually, had Burke not have hit it, he would have taken Actually, it. I think he, he, I think he stumbled a bit, and that's what cost him the, the mark, uh, Bacanara. But still, he's had a magnificent good day. Tackle. Oh, good tackle. Good effort by Michael Byrne to run down his opponent there in Scott Howell. It's Millen Hanna, half-forward flank. Hand pass over the top to Frank Marcassani. He's got a ton of pace. He'll probably run in the uh, BFL sprint later in the day, I would think, representing Carlton. I think he is their entrant. Frank, there he is. Number 25 has been on and off the ground today. Well, he, he may not... Uh, he was selected, I felt, earlier against Fraser Murphy, but he may not uh, run, I, I'm told, as we see Howard towards Ede. Rodney E towards half forward, where Big Red Baines has hardly had a sniff of the ball today. He's been sitting on the bench nearly all day as he brings it down towards half forward. Oh, there's a good gutsy mark he's by played Paul a solid Abbott. Game hasn't he? Uh, whether it's centre half back, he's now there or up forward. Abbott short back into the centre once again. Gagan, the only opposition there, doing it almost with his head on that occasion. With Shane Robertson goes out wide to Ralph. Well. And that's what's going wrong with Carlton at the moment. Just about everything. And the Hawks, as you can see, running in numbers. Malaxos goes round the boundary line, fires up towards the half forward line, but no one at home, and the mark is taken by Rhett Baines. Baines back towards the centre. Shine is there, takes it now, looks for the player in Muller out wide. He can steady, look up towards the half forward line, howl the target. Waiting down, an opportunity for Mike Kennedy. Shot in towards full forward. It's swinging back, and Glen Howard can't get there in time, and it's a goal. Well, that was a very good goal by young Kennedy then. That's his first goal for the game, but he's been a trier today, you know, more than you can say for a few other Carlton players, and uh, he's tried very hard. He rode the pack well. From Muller, a high kick, Howell punched away by Morrissey, and well read by Kennedy, as I mentioned before. And that's a quite a long kick from us. A fair way out from that position. Yes, they've had a few disappointments uh, the Carlton side I feel they've, they've left it to too few centre bounce once again very close to siren time and a Hawks premiership in the Army Reserve Cup coming up as Burke gets onto one for Carlton down towards the half forward line unable to take it was Kenny Ralph under plenty of pressure and he tackled well and will get the free kick Persisting, holding the ball, being oh, a decision. You don't give Ralph 15 metres, Sandy. Well, he has, and he's brought him now to within 35 metres of goal. Well, he's kicked six, uh, Warren Ralph. He's done his job, and there's the siren. The Hawks are premiers. But let's see. It's immaterial what he does with it. Let's see if he can kick his seventh. There's the kick. I think he has. 
Yes, seven goals. A good effort to Warren Ralph, but Hawthorne are uh, the Army Reserve Premiers for 1985. There's the final score. Hawthorne, 18-16. 124 have defeated the Blues. 16-12, 108. And there was, I just saw an exchange of two players over there, Peter Knights and Rod Austin, exchanging Guernseys, and I just wonder whether we'll ever see those two particular players. And having played against Rod Austin, he is a very, very hard player to play against, a I'll body say. player, very fair, and uh, Knights, you having played with him, well, I've never seen a player do what Knights can do and show the courage, the way he can launch himself into packs, high in the air and come crashing down, you get up again and do it again. You know, it was, he has been a tremendous player, I'd see, and uh, I just wonder whether this will be his last game. Well, this could be Sandy uh, and Don. This could be a terrific spur for their senior side, of course. Well, well, before we go any further, Pete, you're quite right, but let's go down onto the ground because one of the heroes of the game, and I'm sure he's going to win Don's award, was Gary Bacanara. Peter Donigan's with him now. Pete? Yes, thanks, Sandy, and uh, Gary just being congratulated by Peter Knights. Gary, a sensational last quarter from the side, and in particular yourself. Have you given up at any stage? No, I thought we had a fair chance all day. We hang in there. We, we applied pressure to them all day. They, they got away from us a bit. It's important for us to stick pretty close to them in the third quarter, and you now the boys rallied really well, and it was a real, real good team effort for them, boys. I think we're going to get a shower here in a yeah. minute with all the champagne going yeah. around. You seem to have the ball on the string in the last quarter. Was it a way of showing the selectors you thought you should have been in the seniors? Well, the only way you can show them is, uh, you know, is by performance. And, uh, you know, that I didn't get picked, but, uh, you know, I hope the side and the players that they picked perform admirably. Let's hope we can bring off a double. I'm disappointed, but uh, hopefully I showed them uh, I can play. Gary, the side's about to do a lap of honour. Enjoy the moment. Thanks very much. Gary Bacanara, who played a sensational game in the last quarter here in the Army Reserve Cup Grand Final. Back to Sandy Roberts. Thank you, Pete. Yes, a fantastic effort. And uh, while the celebrations continue, we shall take a break. Well, quarter by quarter is up on the screen. You can see at quarter time, one goal the difference in favour of the Hawks. At half time, 52 played 48. Four points in favour of the Blues. Then at three quarter time, 12 10 to nine goals 12. 82 to 66 in favour of Carlton. Everyone, of course, felt Carlton were going to go on with it. And look at that last quarter by Hawthorne. Nine goals four, and Carlton kicked four goals two. A sensational last quarter's performance by Hawthorne, with Gary Bacanara showing his magnificent ability in that last quarter, Don. Well, actually, Bacanara receives $100, Peter. I believe that's the best uh, game that I have seen in the reserve grade. Well, congratulations to Gary Bacanara, and uh, we'll cross straight down to Ron Casey down on the ground. Ladies and gentlemen, we've just seen the Hawthorne Football Club win the 1985 Grand Final of the Army Reserve Cup. A fitting end to a great season of reserve football, and so many games of which were seen on Channel 7 during the season. We certainly appreciate the support of the Army Reserve in supporting what has been a great competition culminating in a really great game here at the MCG this afternoon. And I now have great pleasure in introducing the commander of 3rd Division, who will present the Army Reserve Cup and the player medallions to the captain of the winning team. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome Major General Jim Barry. Thank you very much, Mr. Casey. Ladies and gentlemen, after the military formalities, I think you have just seen a match that is a fitting end to the Army Reserve 1985 Cup Series. The Army Reserve is happy to be associated with this prestigious event. Its liaison with the Victorian Football League and to Ron Casey and Network 7. 
Congratulations to all the teams that have participated during the year, and particularly to Carlton and Hawthorne that have provided today's memorable game. It's now my privilege and duty to call upon Rodney Ede of Hawthorne to accept the 1985 Reserve Cup on behalf of his club. Before I do that, I would like to congratulate Carlton Club on a memorable, memorable performance. Ladies and gentlemen, could I now ask Rodney Need to come forward. The, the very, very happy Hawthorne boys. I think uh, young David Sullivan, number 50, Don. It'll give a particular pleasure to young players, you know, in their first final series, more so than the experienced You've players. You've hit, hit the nail on the head, Peter, but also I was just thinking of the uh, team that didn't uh, win, Carlton, and there's, I don't think there's a worse feeling than having played in a grand final and being on a losing grand final side. It's a horrible feeling because it's not so bad finishing third or fourth, you know, you can... Um, come to grips with that but to play in a grand final I know you had the chance and just by a couple of mistakes blew it but there there it is and that's what sports all about and I suppose that's what life you have winners and you have losers and Hawthorne are the winners today well it could possibly uh, be an omen for the seniors maybe it'll give the the senior team a terrific lift you know the young blokes are probably uh, they might even head over to the rooms later on but uh, It'll give that senior side well, a big because they're the underdogs well, in the main exactly game. Well, exactly right. Um, you know, Hawthorne, I suppose, uh, are like the reserve great team. Haven't got the stars at the, the Carlton or maybe Essendon. They were the popular tips. And uh, if you just persevere, uh, you can do amazing things. And that Hawthorne side did amazing things because they were lost halfway through that third quarter. But they got the ball going through Deer in the centre. Then Bennett came into the game, who really didn't contribute at all in the first half. But I believe the match winner was Bacanara. His performance is the best that I have seen in the Armour Reserve. Those marks, I have not seen a player take marks like that again in the Armour Reserve. He didn't do one, he did a couple. And uh, it was his performance, I could think you can sum it up, was a touch of class because he only wasted one kick on the day. Well, they were a very consistent side right throughout the day. Uh, Hawthorne, they were, it was a team effort, I think you'd agree, whereas Carlton relied on far too few, Don. Well, they did, but both sides had that forward, uh, you know, focal forward. They had Des Desmar on screen, the players going off now. Uh, Warren Rolfe up forward for Carlton and Buckenauer up forward. And there's Bennett with the cup. And it's good to have the support of the Army Reserve because they really did put a lot yeah, that, into it. That's interesting because uh, just looking down on the ground, I think they're going up the senior players' race, whereas they came out on the ground through the reserve race. So obviously they're going with the cup into the senior room. And as I said, they will probably, uh, obviously Des Mar and Alan Jeans will use that as some sort of a spur. Uh, for the senior team, so well, that's a great really, idea. I don't think they no, need they much wouldn't of a spur, would they? Right. But, uh, you know, they'd be going through their preparation now. There's maybe uh, half an hour before the game. The players will be just going through their limbering up now. There wouldn't be the crisis point as far as emotion or, you know, the psyching up period of half an hour to go. But maybe that'll add something to it as well. And there we see a uh, film in the dressing room, a shot in the dressing room there of the players just shooting the ball around, just limbering up. They've probably done their stretches, and this is a nerve-wracking period. That period, you just want yeah. to get out onto the uh, ground and get the thing going. That's right. I only played in one uh, 1970, as you well know. You played in a few, Don, but this is the time when the, the nerves get to you and you just... You don't... 
You don't, you don't want all this hit. mucking around. You want to get out there and get out and get the football. And that's what they'd be thinking now. You wouldn't have. You don't even have to address, or the coach really doesn't have to address a team in that situation uh, I think because the players know and they don't need any psyching up whatsoever. I think with, even though the, uh, Gary Bacanara was elated at uh, being the best player on the ground, there's the Essendon rooms, by the way. It looks well, a lot more low key that's because well, it's more low key because the reserves players aren't in there with the uh, trophy, of course, as is the case with Hawthorne, but. Uh, Essendon, oh, there's a lot of pressure on Essendon today. They're a great side. They're red-hot favourites with everyone. I think there's far more pressure on Essendon than there is on Hawthorne because everyone's expecting Essendon to go out and win by a number of goals. Hawthorne are the underdogs, and uh, so therefore there must be less pressure on them, Don. Well, I, don't know. I think there's pressure on everybody uh, at this stage, Peter, and uh, I think that Essendon, I thought Essendon could win, but you never know in grand finals because good players do are levelled by the pressure of the, the underdog because good ordinary players can really lift themselves for important occasions. I think the big surprise, Don, I'd like your uh, comment on this, is the fact that David O'Halloran didn't take his place in the reserves and is obviously playing in the senior lineup. Well, we don't know whether he's going to play in the senior uh, side, but he has been named. He may be on interchange, and there's a banner. Thanks for the memories, Lee. That's his last game, and uh, he's been a great stalwart for the Hawthorne Club. He's played, what, 350-odd games now. A number of years and uh, a great player. Well, you've uh, you played a number of years yourself as captain of the Hawthorne Football Club. What were the qualities that uh, made Lee Matthews such a great player? Well, I think his strength and his courage. Uh, he had he was able to keep his eye on the ball no matter what was coming to him, and he had tremendous strength and he was able to hold his ground. Right. Well, that's uh, that's it for 1985 as far as the Army Reserve Cup. Thanks for your help during the year, Don. We've had another great year. Congratulations to Hawthorne. The Army Reserve Cup Grand Final was another football presentation from Seven Sports.